welcome back. We're do we made it. We're doing we a second it. episode. Two. We made it to two. The sequel. I didn't believe in us. Yep. You didn't believe in us. Nope. But here we are again. I still don't. We've got a lot to talk about this time. Nope. Uh, we're not just going to be talking about our own characters nope. like we were last time. We actually have topics in the comic book universe to talk about. Uh, we're very excited. As last time, I am Jesse Chisholm, and with me today... I am Jaden Gonzalez. And as always, let's just hop right into it, shall we? Yes. Uh, we just got back from Sonic, yeah. yep, the, the Hedgehog, yep. the movie. Mm-hmm. All right, we're just going to get right into this real fast. Grade. Well, we're going back to high school, going back to college. Give it a grade. Okay. Uh, high 70. So a C plus, C plus, C plus, yeah, C, C plus. plus. There you go. What about you? I give it a, a B, a solid B. B, solid B. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that well, much. Well, <laughs> okay. First of all, well, you're a Sonic fan. I am. You a grew Sonic up fan. on Sonic. I grew up on everything. Sonic. Uh, I read all the comics. Mm-hmm. I played the games a lot. I stopped around when they got to like that Sacred Ring stuff. I stopped around there and kind of dropped off at that point, uh-huh. but uh, I did go see this movie. I owed it to my younger child. So, what were your expectations in... going into this movie? Not like, a lot. Not a lot. Like not a lot. On especially a scale of the, one to ten, ten being the best. Like thinking it's going to be the best. Like yeah, on a scale from one to ten, like what what was your expectations? I was ex- expecting a solid C, solid like, like six. Seven. Yeah, like a six or a seven. Okay. I was expecting around there. So you gave it an eight. Yeah, eight. I gave it okay. eight. All right. I came out a lot happier than I thought I'd mm-hmm. be. You yeah. know. So, where do we begin with this? Honestly, for me, in the middle of the movie, and actually, I mean earlier. Okay, so when we were watching the previews and then into the movie, I realized it's a kids movie. Oh yeah. And so with that mentality, after I realized this, I was like. Okay, my expectations kind of dropped a little bit more. Gotcha. And so, the things, the jokes that they made, some of the choices Ooh. that they made that, like, they would, the choices that they had Sonic make, and just his characteristics and overall, it kind of lowered it to the point of, like, okay, it's to be expected. It's a kid's yeah, movie. It's a kid's movie. When it boils down to it, it's a kid's movie. Yeah. It's made for the kids. Mm. Kids like Sonic nowadays. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole Sonic boom game came out and then they made like a show on cartoon network and so now kids yeah. love sonic yeah they know it's, who he is we shot right back into the 90s and now yeah. kids are obsessed with sonic again and yeah. getting sonic toys and sonic games just like in the 90s except now we have so much more expensive stuff hopefully we don't go back down that trail of that toxic sonic weird yeah i don't yeah want, yeah hopefully that these kids don't grow up to be like that what are you trying to say? Uh, what, what, are you, what are you trying to get into? You know there? what? When people, before this time right now, back in the mid-2010s, <laughs> uh-huh. when people said Sonic, <laughs> the first thing that people would think about would Is, be uh, a certain community of people yeah. that were, you know? No disrespect no. to that community. I might be a little bit. The, don't come after us, that community. You They're still around. Me. They can come after me. <laughs> don't come after us. Come after me. Alone. But anyways, that's, that. that's the point of what I'm trying to say is is that there's not really that stigma around Sonic anymore. Yeah. Like, when I think of Sonic, I think of, well, now this movie and mm-hmm. these the game, the cartoon, the new stuff that are coming out, you yeah. know? It's not like, it's not a weird thing to, for people to talk about anymore. Yeah. So... What were some parts of the movie without spoiling anything? Yeah, we'll we'll get into spoilers a little bit down the line. We'll throw up like a we'll throw up the time that we stop talking about the spoilers if you want to skip ahead to that. Mm-hmm. But we'll save that in a little bit. What were some parts that you enjoyed and then afterwards what were some things that you didn't enjoy? Okay. Um enjoyed, I enjoyed the look. Mm-hmm. They did a real good job. Let's be honest, that mm-hmm. movie would have been a whole lot different it if they been. stuck with that first design. Yeah. I yeah. would not have liked this movie at all. Mm-hmm. I would have been creeped out the entire time. I would have been horrified. I would have been watching have watched, it just yeah. like, yeah, I would have been terrified. I'm, no, I'm not going into that theater. I'm not with that thing. That thing's staring at me, staring at whatever that other actor's yeah. name is. The one from uh, 
He's from. I he's from Westworld. He's yeah, the, that's right. Yes, he's the right. good guy yes. in Westworld. That's, I good couldn't guy. remember what he was from, but um, honestly, I appreciate the studio listening to yeah, the fans. That's and a to big the step. That's, that's a big that's step. A huge step. Like I, they took criticism and they ran with it. I'm a part of the conspiracy theory here that mm-hmm. believes that um that they did that on purpose that they released a very poor gross looking sonic on purpose so that people are like you know the internet gets in on this yeah. going this is terrible this is awful yeah then they treat it as oh that was just for like trailers and stuff yeah. we have the real sonic uh-huh. right here then they brought in that saying oh look we changed it so then everyone's like yeah listen to the internet heck yeah listen to the internet now everyone's going to that movie and it's yeah. got a what was it like a ninety five on Rotten Something, Tomatoes yeah, for from, the from audience. audience. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, critics don't matter. Yeah, critics. Suck. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, honestly, that makes sense. I feel like that's a smart move. It's a lot more work. Yeah. For the the VFX artists, but I mean, they're a studio and they have yeah, the power to do got that. that. Budget. Yeah, I don't. I could totally see that happening. Honestly, yeah. that's what I would do. Um. So the look was really good. Uh just the characters in general the uh the actor i can't remember his name but the main character what was dude. his name in westworld uh oh gosh i don't remember dolores is the chick and right. he is i want to say jesse no 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 it's um oh no you can look it up, yeah, look it up. uh anyways tell me more what okay. are you talking about uh ben schwartz who mm-hmm. voices sonic yeah did an excellent job he's he was just a really good voice, uh, in general. You know who that is, right? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, he I'd did say fantastic. My... Yeah. Was it? I think yeah. I think he was fantastic oh, okay. doing the voice. Honestly, he kind of reminded me of like the Sonic right. games, and it reminded me of like Sonic X and stuff like that. It's kind of easy to pull off that kind of Sonic's voice has kind of stayed the same throughout the years of that kind of cool '90s kind of kid, yeah, esque kind of thing that they're going for, and they've just kind of kept that. So as long as you can do that, you're fine. But he did. He pulled it off really well. Teddy. Uh, that's Teddy, Teddy, that's right. Teddy. And, and the actor's the name Lord. is James Marston. James Marston? James Marston. Like John Marston? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Okay, so Teddy. Anyway, he did a really good job. Yeah. Um, And then Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey was my favorite part, honestly. He did a really good job. Yeah. So, like, overall, it was kind of like a wacky character and stuff yeah. like that. I don't want to get into it's it so too weird. much just now. <laughs> but there was a certain parts towards the end. Uh-huh. Like, when he'd start yelling and start raising his yeah. voice and kind of, like, doing that crazy bit when he'd yell, mm-hmm. he sounded exactly like Eggman. Did he? He sounded like the kind of old style, like, oh. Robotnik. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. He did, like, a perfect job with that. He yeah. did so good. It sounded just like the one from the games that I kept thinking, like, Maybe they just swapped voices just there Maybe. or something, but no, I think that's just Jim Carrey. He did such a good job. He, yeah, he was definitely with that voice. Part. Yeah, I think <laughs> there were just some parts where he would just do something, and I was just like, <laughs> it was a very random choice. It was so weird. You kind of look at it like, and I would right. just look at you, and it was just like, did he just do that? Did he just say that? <laughs> but it was like, it was funny. It was like random but funny, and it was just like classic jim carrey yeah i feel like he was kind of in his older element yeah like i haven't seen this jim carrey in a long time i feel like they gave him a lot of freedom yeah they're just like be yourself just don't curse be yourself (laughs) this is a kid and then he just went for it yeah it was uh he was a strange character definitely not what i would expect out of like robotnik yeah kind of deal usually he's just kind of like the yeah he's smart but he's also like really dumb Mm -hmm. and you know clumsy (laughs) and embarrassing It was weird. It was, I don't know, it was odd. It was, um, back in the day, I'm not trying to stray too far, mm-hmm. but back in the day, there was an old Sonic show. There was a lot of Sonic shows, but there was one that was more guided towards kids, or like at the end of every episode, they'd have like a Sonic says. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Kind of deal. Yeah. And that Robotnik was kind of like, not, he was, he was a lot like the Robotnik in this, where he was just like, you know? Throwing his hands around, doing oh, like weird oh. things, shaking his butt and stuff like that, and just being generally really odd. Energetic and just, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's kind of what it reminded me of. I'm wondering if like Jim Carrey kind of yeah, looked at that, yeah. reviewed that, and went like, that's what I'm going for. Because mm-hmm. then, you know, in the later Sonic shows, Robotnik got real dark and scary. He had like a robotic arm and he would like <laughs> capture animals and torture them and stuff. It was real Well, he does that up. in the games, doesn't he? Well, yeah, but like this was like yeah, every time they'd like pan over to his little robot topia or whatever it was called, yeah. it was always like, 
you know, the colors would darken and like everything would get really like <laughs> serious and what have you. Yeah. It was weird. Anyway. That's so funny. Um, so yeah, the, those are kind of the good parts to mm. talk about some of the bad parts. Mm. We'll have to, we'll have to do spoilers, but real quick, have you, have we left out anything that you thought was good? I honestly, without spoilers no yeah i i think that like like you said the 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 vfx part was really really good yeah it honestly went above and beyond what i expected um because honestly even like the old trailer it wasn't bad vfx wise mm -hmm. like he he looked like he was there in those old trailers you know he looked like he was there it was just he was ugly yeah it just it was, it was the eyes yeah it was the eyes and the small teeth and the small yeah. hands and just everything it was just weird but i just feel like they were so in that um regard in that that old those old trailers they were just going for too realistic yeah and with this the new sonic it was that perfect blend of cartoon mixed with reality yeah like it wasn't too cartoony and it wasn't too realistic it was just it was perfect and it's kind of hard when you have like a character that's vfx to interact with like a real person it's kind of hard but i feel like this kind of did not like a perfect job there there are parts where it's like okay obviously he's not actually touching yeah. him but i feel like for the most part they did a really good job of doing that and then also one of my another my favorite part is obviously jim carrey just because i yeah. love jim carrey who doesn't so yeah what's what's like your favorite role for jim carrey definitely there's there's a lot i love uh, all right um <laughs> i'll put you on the spot i love the truman show have you seen that one yeah it's yeah, yeah. so good i love it's that but classic movie that i can watch all the time is probably the grinch yeah i love that i have to watch that every year during christmas time and i have to watch it and just it just gets me in the christmas feels yeah and i think it's just the perfect i think that's the same for everyone the perfect movie <laughs> yeah Perfect score. He did a really good job with that yeah. movie. There's just too many quotes. Like I, I quote, I quote that movie <laughs> so much. Like it's just, it's perfect. It's spot on. What about the Riddler? Oh, you don't like him as a Riddler? <laughs> That's off. Topic. I like to, I like to, I like to block that out of my memory. That's that, that movie and just anything that has to do with that. That's the movie with the bat, bat nipples, nipples, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, I think yeah. it's actually. The one just after that. Okay. Well, Maybe. Either way, I don't know what they were doing back then, but that was not that was not it. Yeah. Sorry, Jim. Love you, man. <laughs> yeah, for when you're watching this. Yeah. Who knows? You never know. Anyway. Uh so now things that you disliked. What things that I disliked, so this is gonna kinda get into spoilers. So editor, put up the time right now whenever the hell we stop talking about spoilers. Skip to twenty minutes and eight seconds for no spoils. Maybe. Thank you, editor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Plot wise, mm -hmm. it was kind of, it was kind of, I don't want to say the, garbage. Yeah. It was just, it was very cheesy. It was bland. And it's a kids movie though, yeah, that's so it's got to be something they can follow, yeah. like everyone can follow. Mm -hmm. But it got like super cheesy, just with like the he's my friend, like oh he called me his friend, now I'm alive again kind of yeah. deal. That's just that's real cheesy and yeah. like. You don't have to go that direction. There, uh -huh. are, there are plenty of movies out there that, that are have that. are guided towards kids, but have like a a great plot, you know, mm -hmm. that do it in like a better way. I think mm -hmm. like you know, Into the Spider Verse. That's Into something it's guided towards kids, yeah. but the plot isn't like cheesy. Mm -hmm. This was just so much cheese. Yeah, it was the cheese fest. Ooh. Yeah, I think that honestly, when I was watching the movie, I was like, that guy doesn't need to be in this movie. <laughs> like Sonic didn't need. Uh, a weird Teddy. human yeah. friend no they like they were going on a cross-country road trip yeah and i was like he's sonic yeah. he can run he can run and then they kept run. stopping too yeah. you got you got jim carrey sorry dr robotnik chasing him down yeah. and stuff like the government this guy who with millions of drones and stuff that can see him that yeah. can calculate them and where they're at yeah from anywhere in the world and they're like oh let's stop at that bar for a little bit oh let's stop at a hotel the those portions were so long and drawn yeah, out too. It just <laughs> it took a so long sick. time. Where you're just like, all right, this is um yeah. going nowhere fast. <laughs> the total opposite of Sonic, right? Who needs it's to go just, fast. It's, yeah, there was a lot of pointless scenes. We didn't need to see his like see the uh, the wife's family. 
No. It was funny and stuff like that, but mm. we really we don't need that. No. It was just pointless. It yeah. was really a lot of talking uh without Sonic, yeah. mind you. And it was it kind of felt like when you're watching the Godzilla movies and oh, it's like yeah. and they just... go to the human parts and you're just kinda like this isn't what I came here to see. I don't care about the human parts. I want to see Godzilla, Godzilla being yeah. Godzilla. Same with this. I want to see Sonic being Sonic. The stuff where he's running around and fighting and stuff. Yeah, like that, that was cool. That's so good. It was so cool. They did a great job with like the slow motion stuff and the yeah. pausing and what have you. Yeah. But then when they were just sitting around talking, it was just like, who cares? Yeah. I know. And it, honestly, when I think about it, if you were to take out those scenes, the movie would have <laughs> be been real like, short. Yeah, 13, <laughs> yeah. 20 minutes long. <laughs> real short Maybe movie. even less than that. You know? <laughs> Because that's the thing is that, like, you don't need those elements. He can no. run super, super fast. Yeah. He could get, get to where he needed to go in, like, a second. He didn't need to go on a road trip. But yeah. I guess that was the plot is he wants a friend and stuff like that. Yeah. He wants to do stuff before I, he leaves just, Earth. Yeah. Anyways. Again, it's a kid's movie. Yeah. That's why I'm, like, I'm I'm not trying to grill it so hard. Like, yeah. I get it. But I, I yeah. At the same time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing that wowzers, um, what? again, <laughs> geared towards it. children, Yeah. but I, I got pretty angry when I saw the flossing, when I yeah. saw that flossing and the random, uh, random fart. <laughs> and again, it's, it's geared towards <laughs> children. So... We're going to say that like a hundred times. It's geared towards children. Yeah. But the, why is that the humor now? I don't know. Oh, well, I. I, I don't know. Like I the just, minions and stuff like that. They're always farting and making noises and what have you. It was so, it was so cringy. And we were sitting in a row with, uh, like, two seats over. There was, like, another group oh of, like... Oh, no, 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 not those people. Oh, okay. On, we'll on talk the other about side. that. On the other side of us, there was, like, another group of, you know, youngish people. And when they just kept doing the flossing or when they did, like, the fart bit, it was just, like... In my heart, I was groaning, and I, I could hear you groan, but then I could also hear them groan. Yeah, like it was just like, uh, like you could feel it in the air. It was yeah. just like the whole theater, minus the kids, was yeah. just groaning on the inside. It was just like, ugh. Like, that's what I was gonna say. Is during that time, you know who wasn't groaning? All the kids. Yeah, yeah. all the kids were like, oh, it's something. They all started laughing, like, yeah. oh, look, it's flossing and yeah. stuff. So that stuff works. It does. The fart, the flossing and all that stuff, it works. Yeah. The kids love that stuff. Yeah. They're like, oh my gosh, I can relate to this. And yeah. that, So that's the point of those relate scenes. Relate to farting. Like. <laughs> that's, the, that's their humor nowadays. <laughs> yeah. But and it, when you think back about it, it was kind of our humor when it came to shows back in the day true. too. A lot of Billy and Mandy, a lot of yeah, but those Invader Zim. Good, yeah. But here's we the thing. think they're good. Here's the thing is that like, this movie isn't going to age well. No. No, no, no. Because of those things. Like, (laughs) in, I don't know how many, five less years, like, everyone's going to be like, okay, what's that move? What is a floss? Like, who's, what's flossing? What's happening here? What is that? Like, what's he doing with his arms? Yeah. It's so weird. And so it's just, is it worth it to do that? No. Just for a cheap laugh. But it gets the money, I guess. I guess. I mean. And maybe it gets kids excited about, again, we're in spoiler territory, so it doesn't matter, a sequel. Yeah. Having to deal with, uh, they showed Tails at the end. Yeah. Tails oh, look really a, good. That's a big spoiler. I wonder, we're in spoiler territory. Yeah. I wonder if Tails looked really messed up too. Like, what you mean like, with the trailer? Well, because yeah. obviously they're not going to show Tails in the trailer because mm-hmm. that was yeah. like an after credits thing. Yeah. I wonder if Tails looked a lot like Sonic where he's got like I'm... the single eyes and like tiny teeth and really weird looking. I'm and afraid. then when they changed Sonic... Yeah. They had to change tails as well. Like, I know he's only in here for these last few like seconds, <laughs> yeah. but we need to change him too. I'm afraid of what that. I tails bet you he looks looked like. like that. You know that that <laughs> that image that everybody uh, shares, where that like it's like a fox and he's sitting at the edge of the the his bed or something like that, and he's just all messed up and crinkly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, he's sitting in, like a chair or yeah. something. Editor, it's like a put it poor up. taxidermy. Put it up. Please, yeah, editor, put it up, editor. To, like so, I don't poor seem like taxidermy. Yes, yeah. like that's what I imagine their t- like tails would look like <laughs> before <laughs> just yellow <laughs> yeah <laughs> with two tails <laughs> that's exactly what i'm picturing right now and i'm like that's pretty I'm fair. so glad that they changed it that's pretty fair but yeah i honestly towards the end of the movie i was just waiting for the movie to end I'm, yeah i'm like and you kind of heard me i was like can we just yeah leave like can we just finish this <laughs> 
like ah uh, and that was that's just my overall feelings about the movie it was just i couldn't wait for this movie to end you know it made the whole experience worse yes i do when people sitting to the right of you are non-stop talking i mean non-stop <laughs> talking that big stupid idiot had something to say Every single second of that movie. And if, apparently it was so funny. It was real funny to him. It was so funny that like, it was, it wasn't just like a chuckle. It was like belligerent laughter. Yeah. Like to where like you could hear it from across like the theater. And it's just like, what is so funny? Yeah. I don't get it. And then he just kept talking. And see, that was the thing is, uh, there were three of them. Yeah. You three out there. We'll find you. You stop coming to movie theaters. You stay home. You stay home and you don't leave the house until you get better. Stop hanging out with each other. You're no good for each other. Especially you, big guy. Big guy. They were all started laughing and stuff like yeah. that, right? Then after a while, the two of them kept shushing the big guy. Yeah. Like, the big guy kept sat laughing and stuff. And when Sonic did his little fart, the big guy kept going like, <clears throat> like, in little fart noises and stuff like that. Just nonstop going, <laughs> he farted. And they're like, shut up, dude, shut up. And he's like, you shut up, you shut up. And I was like, oh my gosh, just leave the theater. Why are you still here? And by the grace of God. <laughs> yeah, thank the Lord in heaven. Something must have happened to him. They, they got a text from their mom or something. They got like spontaneous diarrhea. Yeah. All at the same time. <laughs> All at the same time. Like, oh, we gotta go. We gotta <laughs> go. And they just left. They left before the movie ended. They left like right when they got to San Francisco or whatever. Yeah. Like. It was, it, it ended. They yeah. just left. They left. Thank God they left. Oh my gosh. I wish they could have left when the movie started. I was so angry. Who who does it? Who buys movie tickets? Goes to a movie with a giant ass screen in front of you. And you just talk the entire time. <laughs> Who does that? I don't know. Anyway. Weirdos. I got angry just there. I don't know if you could tell. Yeah. Um. Overall, would you recommend it to somebody? Would you recommend someone to go see it? <sighs> Normal people. Normal people. No. No? That's fair. If you have a kid, yeah, go watch it. Go yeah. watch it with your kid. If not, I mean, you can save 12 bucks. 12.20. Yeah, we spent 12.20. You can, you, can, you can save that for... Anything. Denny's. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Something else. Buy indie comics. Yeah. Buy something else. Invest in a Kickstarter yeah. or yeah, something. Yeah, there you go. But um, you don't need to watch this movie. It's no. not necessary. That's fair. I'd say if you're a fan, if you like yeah. Sonic growing up, go watch the movie. Just once. If you've got a kid that likes Sonic, absolutely go watch the movie. Mm -hmm. Take your kid. Your kid's going to absolutely love it. You, you'll get a, like, a nice little like smile out of some of the nostalgia it brings yeah. and what have you some like the rings and noises and stuff you'll get like a nice smile out of that that'll be about it again i'd still stand by me saying it's it's a solid 80 for a sonic fan mm. it's a solid b i don't even uh, see plus yeah That's all right part. but yes shall we continue to the next we topic shall. um uh, what day did that come out? Uh, what, Sonic, Sonic? No, Sonic? Sonic, that was the most recent thing. That came out on Valentine's Day. Yeah. We're going to be talking about just stuff throughout February that happened since mm -hmm. the last podcast. Yeah. Uh, when did Birds of Prey come out? Do you remember? Um, It was on a Thursday, and I think it was the first Thursday of the month. So, I, um, let me see. Might have been the 8th or something like that. I could be wrong. Okay. Either way, it came out. 8th of February, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Somewhere okay. around there. Okay. I have not seen that movie. Mm -hmm. I, have. I I have nothing against the movie. I just didn't really feel like going to see it. Yeah. I think that that's why a lot of people didn't go see the movie is because, number one, of the marketing. Yeah. Here's a, the second thing why I think people didn't watch this movie. Because of the name. And there's a lot of what drama just a lot of uh, just a bunch of words going around about the title of the movie is what i'm trying to say is birds of prey birds of prey yeah because you haven't heard that they actually changed the title of the movie no what was it but not like the the technical title of the name of the movie is staying the same it's birds of prey and the you know emancipation of one harlequin that's okay. that's the name of the movie officially okay. technically sure but the uh, Warner Brothers went around and changed the name of the title of the movie for theaters. Okay. They changed it to Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. Interesting. You want to know why? 
because it's just Harley Quinn? No, because nobody knows who the Birds of Prey are, but, but they know who, who Harley, Harley Quinn, Quinn is. is. And so I, that's another reason why I believe that nobody wants to go see this movie. To be fair, I think I can only list one Bird of Prey member. That's about it, and that's Black Ooh, Canary. Black Canary, yeah. And nope, just Black Canary. That's all I can think of. For me, I want to... So I, it's been a while since I've seen this movie. I watched it on opening night, and I went to go see it after I got off work, and it was pretty late. So it was around midnight that I okay. watched this movie. And so I feel like to get a better... What's the word? Um, um, just a, I guess I just need to watch this movie again <laughs> to get it like because I was tired when I watched it and right. you know it was you know late at night and I feel like I didn't really get a proper right. you know I mean Sonic we just watched we that watched we it. just so got yeah, back from fresh the in my mind um, but overall honestly I remember when I because I went with my friend my friend Luis and we watched it together. <laughs> And I remember we were walking out of the theater and we both genuinely looked at each other and we were like, you know what? I like that movie, yeah. you know? And so, and then you can go on um, uh, Rotten Tomatoes and people generally like the movie. Honestly, it has good reviews on Rotten Tomatoes from both critics and uh, moviegoers. And so I think that the general populace actually like this movie, like those who have, who have actually seen it. However, however. Okay. The people who actually read comic books and the people, I feel like, who know these characters, like, and just um, comic book buffs and nerds like that, I feel like generally did not like this movie. Okay. And, like, because every time I go on Instagram, I always come across these uh, um, comic book pages and they always give their reviews and I, I read them, you know, and I feel like generally a lot of them, most of them that I've come across actually didn't like this movie. And the more that I think about it, and I'm not being influenced by these pages at all, but it kind of got me to thinking. Gotcha. You know? It just, there were, honestly, it was a fun movie. I had fun watching it. It was, you know, it was funny. It had adult humor. It was rated R, so they could do things, like, right. with uh, blood, and, like, they could say things that, you know, you couldn't say in a PG-13 movie. And so it was funny. It got me laughing and stuff like that. I had a good time watching it. It was a fun movie. But when I got to thinking about, you know, what they did and how they use these characters, like, I, I think that my opinion of the movie as, like, from plot points and, you know, in general, it just, it could have been something better. Okay. Yeah. Overall, I think it could have been something better. Um, how they handled the characters. Everyone knows that, okay, it's not a spoiler. Everyone knows that Cassandra Kane is in the show or in the movie. Right, Cassandra Cain is uh, so, no, not so, what you're talking. Not spoiler. She is orphan. Not spoiler. Orphan. So yeah, her name is Orphan. That's her superhero name. Okay. Um. So Cassandra Cain is this super cool character. So she is like the daughter of a Lady Shiva, who is like the best hand-to-hand combat yeah. lady in uh, the DC universe. She's also the daughter of uh, I forget his name, but he's like a top assassin. And so, she, like, the idea is that she's supposed to be this, you know, super good fighter, like, super cool character. And she is. She's super cool. But in this movie, she's just, like, a knockoff Jason, you know, Jason Todd. Or she's just, like, some punk kid. Okay. You know, pickpocket. And so, I just, I don't understand why they went to that approach. Right. When, like, the whole idea of this movie is to be, like, a strong female-led, you know, movie, which it is. Mm. But they could have had this really cool character, and they kind of wasted it. And when they could have just used any old kid. Right. Like, they didn't need to use Cassandra Kane. They could have used any, you know, they could have made a new character. Mm -hmm. But they just wasted Cassandra Kane on this just movie that nobody is going to watch. Do you is, feel like it's because they put more time and effort into Harley Quinn? Because, yeah, who do you think gets the most screen time in that movie? Oh you yeah, see? it's 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 Harley Quinn. It's a Harley right. Quinn movie. It's a Harley right. Quinn movie. I don't know why they named it Birds of Prey. The Birds of it's Prey. It's just Harley Quinn. The Birds of Prey come together at the end of the movie, and that's just about it. You know what re- this movie reminded me of? It reminded me of Deadpool one. Okay. And so, you know how, like, Deadpool 1, it was basically Deadpool telling the story of the, you know, the plot of the movie. Mm -hmm. And it goes from, like, you know, 
um, back in the past to the present. And it's just like, it's, it's telling it like the story kind of almost backwards yeah. to something. That's kind of how the flow of the movie was. And it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's kind of like a, it's, you know, how movies are told, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it just gave me really big Deadpool one vibes, you know? And I just feel like that's just who Harley Quinn is to DC. You know, it's and, just kind of like fourth wall breaking, funny. No, well, here's the thing: is that I'm a big Deadpool fan. I love Deadpool. Yes, you are. I like before in 2011, like I became the biggest Deadpool fan, and that was like when he had that title going on. He had a title mm-hmm. in 2011. That's why I started reading him, and that was like before his big surge of fans. Right when he got popular. Yeah, and so after he got popular. He became so overused. Mm-hmm. And then the same thing is happening to Dar- Harley Quinn. I yeah, 100% agree. She's like in every media. She's in, She has like, she has a show, which is great. I love the show. It's the show's great. really good. I love the show. It's better Surprisingly, than I Surprisingly. Yeah, it's better than I thought it was. A lot of good voice acting talent. A lot yeah. of funny scripting. and Yeah. But here's the thing is that she's being overused to yeah. the point where it's almost annoying. Mm-hmm. And the same thing for me as a Deadpool fan, it's the same thing that happened to Deadpool. It's like, dude, I love this character, but he's annoying now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's almost, I don't want to say cringy, but it's like, I, I hate how they've kind of used and abused this character just for just the sake of getting money. It's It's kind of like for a public sake, it's like... Nobody really knew exactly who Deadpool was. Say mm-hmm. back in like 2003, nobody cared about no. Deadpool and stuff like no. that. But once they figure out that this character can like, it draws in like the internet. Yeah. Then that's all they use. Like Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn was awesome back in like the animated yeah. Batman series and stuff when she was she like was. Joker's little like crony, but she also stood up for herself yeah. in a few episodes and stuff. Um, But like once kind of, I think around maybe like the Arkham games. Mm-hmm. When, like, people started to see her in that, like, nurse's outfit yeah, and stuff like, like that, everyone, everyone started paying <laughs> yeah. more attention. Like, oh, who's this? Who's yeah. this? Who's this? This is, like, a female Joker or something like that. Yeah. And then I think that just kind of started where she's, like, in everything. She is in everything. She's in all the Arkham games. Mm-hmm. She's in, like, a lot of DC comics. She is mm-hmm. uh, in just about every iteration of Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. She was in the Suicide Squad movie, Suicide Squad comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's in the new Suicide Squad movie. She's in the new up. one. Yep. She's in the uh, the little animated uh, movies and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, she's in Injustice. She's like a big part of Injustice. Mm-hmm. Years one and I think. Or not year one, but, but Injustice one, one and, and two. two. Yeah. Um, then she got her own show. She gets. She's in the movies and stuff like that. Yeah. There was... I'm going to start ranting if I get too much into this, but... There was, okay. I don't know what Batman anniversary it was, but there was a Batman anniversary. I think it was the 80th year. 80th year? Yeah. Yeah, the 80th year, mm-hmm. we'll say, um, where they just dedicated it to Harley Quinn. Batman's birthday. Batman's birthday. They dedicated it to Harley Quinn. D- at that point, you're using her too much. Yeah. It's, it's too much at this point mm-hmm. where it's just like, who cares? Which is, the thing is, it's like, Harley Quinn is not a bad character. No, not She's at not. all. It, but it's to the point where it's like, you're making me annoyed of this character. Right. I don't Same want with Deadpool. S- yeah. Deadpool's not a bad character. I love Deadpool. Yeah. I love Harley Quinn. But it's like, dude, stop shoving it down my throat. Everything. Yeah. When it's just like, all right, we need a new idea for like a uh, new comic. Mm-hmm. I right, throw Harley Quinn in there and uh, yeah, that'll be it. Yeah. Throw in any random character you feel like. As so long as we got Harley Quinn, we'll just, make some money off this. Yeah, pretty much. And it's just, it, that's what it is. It's just, for the sake of getting money. Yeah. And it's obvious. Like, I'm, as a fan, I'm not stupid. I get what you're trying to do. <laughs> and so stop treating me like I'm an idiot. Yeah. Like, but see, they're not doing it for fans. No, they're not. Because fans already know, like, all right, you're kind of overdoing it with the Harley Quinn. They're doing it to get everybody in, which mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. It does. Yeah. You're trying to get people who, who have never touched a comic book, who have never seen a comic book. You're trying to get them invested into this thing you're making that involves comic books. <laughs> You want to yeah. get these, like, just regular average yeah. Joe into it. So mm-hmm. you use something that's easy to just hook on to people. And yeah. for DC, that's Harley Quinn. And for Marvel, that's uh, Deadpool. Yeah, It's just an easy, like, yeah. it's easy bait. Yeah. And, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going there. <laughs> I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to go there. But I'm going to go there. Oh, here we go. Back to the movie. I think 
this movie just it was I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Okay. But almost just like the rest of the DCEU extended universe, the movies. Yes. This movie did not have a roadmap. It was just kind of all over the place, is well, what you're saying? No, it's just it's it's like they wanted it to be connected connected to something. Oh, gotcha. But it's like ambiguous where it's like, oh, it could be connected to something, but it's like, okay. oh, oh, it's not, you know, but it is, but it's not, you know, because it's like they showed scenes from Suicide Squad. They didn't show Jared Leto. Okay. Which like to me, I was like, okay, whatever, you know, forget him, you know, but you know, it's like, is it connected? Is it not connected? And as a DC fan, it's just. Man, like this, the biggest disappointment to me because I'm a huge DC fan. You're a huge yes. DC fan. This is just like so disappointing because I kept reading articles and I I, just, I got myself hyped up because I, I I felt like they were gonna do a cameo with a certain character mm-hmm. or I I thought they were gonna do something with something. You know, I thought they were gonna do something, anything, anything to draw my attention to some sort of extended universe or some sort of future to these movies. Essentially, you're kind of hoping for yeah, another, I'm hoping a, for another MCU kind of deal. Yes, where it's but connecting. There, there wasn't, and like Not that the... was that was the biggest disappointment to me. Like it, it just like, and it just doesn't get me excited for the Suicide Squad movie, which doesn't help them. It doesn't right. get me excited for really anything because it's like, what's the point of seeing these movies? Like it's good, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, sure, but there's nothing overarching to get me to go to see right. these movies. And I feel like, like you said, the average Joes, it's almost the same thing who, you know, they, again, these people don't know who the birds of prey are. They have an idea who a Harley Quinn is because of, you know, the suicide squad and every other piece of media that they're shoving her yeah. in. So they know who Harley Quinn is, but it's like, okay, what's the point of watching this? If there's nothing else after it, you know? Yeah. And there's, just to me, as a DC fan, it's just a, a shot to the nuts. You know, I, I it, it's just like they're just shooting in the dark. And I had the biggest hopes back in 2016 for uh, Batman v Superman. And then again in Justice League. And then, you know, man, like time and time again, it was just like, man, like I love these characters, but they're just being handled so poorly. You know, and that just that makes me so sad. You know, and so me, me and my friend Luis, we were yep. we we were talking about the DCU, and I've seen this theory going around about the Flash movie, and what they could do, and this is something that they should do if they're smart. Right. So they could do a soft reboot to the overall, you know, DCEU via the Flashpoint paradox. Okay. And that would be so smart. That would be the smartest thing for them to do. And it would get them back on track. And, you know, it could, you know, project them on a path. Mm-hmm. You know, a roadmap somewhere, you know. However, my friend, Luis, he said something. Because I was saying that to him. I was like, I was getting excited. I was like, they could do this. You know, if they're smart, they could do that. But then he said something to me that was just like a big, again, just kick in the pants. <laughs> what he said was... Flashpoint, like it would be smart for them to do that. However, Flashpoint should have been, should have been, should have been like an Infinity War type of thing. Okay. This big thing that was being like, you know, that we like we were waiting for, that it was being hyped for, that we were like and in like in anticipation for. And now it's more so just being used if they if they do it. To reboot. To reboot. More so as like a plot point, not more at, like not as like this amazing thing that could have been, but more so as something just something to save them, something to save them. And that's right. just like after he said that, I was like, oh, like, <laughs> like, and don't get me wrong. If they do do it, I will go see it and I will, if it's good, I'll enjoy it, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll pour in all my money because I'm a DC fan. And I'll give them all my money forever. But, like, after he said that, I was like, dude, like, they just screwed us over so bad. Yeah. How, why would you do that? Warner Brothers, like, oh, I hate you. Hate it's a love-hate relationship. No, I hate them. They make the Arkham games, all right? You gotta, you gotta love yeah, them a little. I do. All right. Whatever. <laughs> but anyways, that's my little spiel. So you were hoping kind of like, uh, 
that's kind of what X Men in a way. Yeah. Where like all this stuff happens with Jean Grey mm-hmm. turning into Phoenix and stuff like that, yeah. and then she gets killed. The spoilers for a yeah, been movie for a that came out in like two thousand yeah, two thousand seven or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Where she dies, and then uh, Xavier kind of dies and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and then, and then Doom. I don't remember what X Men movie it was, but Wolverine Days of, goes back, Days of Future Past, fixes everything, yep. he comes back to the future, mm-hmm. yep, and then everything's back. Jean Grey's back, Scott's back, everyone's back and happy yep. and stuff like that. So you're kind of hoping for That's... that kind of quick fix that they used. Yeah, but here's the thing: is that in the same way that Flashpoint should have been something, mm-hmm. Days of Future Past should, should have been something, something yeah. big. Yeah. You know, instead of being just used as a plot point to correct their past. Yeah, everyone was hoping for the... Yeah. Whatever the giant things the, are called. Uh, the sen- uh, Sentinels. Sentinels yeah, yeah, Sentinels. And it, w- it was... I haven't seen that movie in a while. I... I... They used Sentinels, but it was it yeah. was like Magneto using Sentinels, or mm-hmm. maybe it was the government using Sentinels. Yeah, but like Magneto's able to control them mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and it happens like in the eighties or whatever. And yeah. it was just very. Yeah, like, I, I think it was. I, anymore? I think it was a good movie. I can't remember, but it's just like, dude, I don't want a quick fix. It, I want something great and like fantastic. You know what they need? DC or Warner Brothers? They need a Kevin Feige. They need a guy who's like over like all of the creativity that has full reign of where this is going right because right now it's just pretty much just any director taking control yeah and stuff like and it's like and then not just the directors it's like them reporting to the studio you know they're not reporting to somebody specific they're just reporting to the studio and let's be honest the studio is not very good at directing this so it's like they need somebody it's who just has everywhere. yeah they need somebody that has creative control of where this ship is going mm-hmm. you know like and like i'll do it for free shoot <laughs> like i have ideas like you can give me some royalties but i don't want to do it for the money i i genuinely care about these movies and i want you guys to succeed right i'll do it for free at the end of the day you also have to understand it's hard it is. It is yeah. hard to do this kind of stuff. There is a lot more that comes into it than just like, you should do this, this, and this. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's a true. lot of roadblocks yeah. that come up for them. Yeah. I'm saying they could absolutely do better, but I'm also saying there's definitely reasons that, like, yeah. they have failed in the past that's kind of out of their control and mm. stuff like that. Yeah, that's true. Whether it be some actor that's just like, no, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Or just some company dropping out anything like that mm, yeah it's hard it, we yeah, look I at it from it. like a viewer's perspective mm-hmm. where it's just like you could have done this you could have done this yeah which yeah they absolutely could have and yeah. should have but mm. we also have to realize it is hard yeah it definitely is yeah it's it's yeah. weird you're kind of like torn where it's just you're looking at it like i can do better than <laughs> they can do it but at the same time you know they're also working with a billion dollar budget they're terrified yeah. and it's it could true. all fail and it usually does yeah I think uh, that it's just, I don't know. I think that they're just caring too much about the money, which yeah. is like they're a corporation. I get it. They're trying to make they money. They have to make money. But here's the thing is that in order to make something great, you need to take some risks. Yeah. And it's just, man, like, give me something, you know, <laughs> give me some wiggle room here. Like, d- yeah. d- take some give risks. Give me anything. Yeah. I, because here's the thing is that this is, what, the second movie that Harley Quinn's been in? Okay, but Superman yeah. hasn't had his own movie since what 2013. Yeah, it's been seven years, man. Yeah. Like, where's my Superman movie? Yeah. Harry Campbell, I love you. I love what you're doing with The Witcher. Did you call him Harry? Henry, my man, <laughs> my boy, who I just called by the wrong name. Please don't give up my... on Superman. This guy, this P- guy right there. Please don't give up on Superman. He's on my shirt. Yeah, I love that man. He's such a Number one, he's gorgeous. Yeah, he's a he gorgeous really is. Man, he's a great I actor. Just stared him right and now. I think some people don't like him, but I love him as Superman. And so I'm asking, pleading with you, please don't give up on Superman. Please. I like him as Superman. I just feel like there was some bad writing in there. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, there was. Because but Superman, that's not his fault. Right, that's not his fault. I think he can play a great Superman. It's just yeah. This again, this is off topic. We'll get right back into stuff mm-hmm. like in a second. We'll move on to our next topic. Yeah. Um, but with his Superman, I just kind of felt like. All he did care about was Lois Lane. Yeah. He and his his mom. Uh 
But like Superman, what makes Superman so great is he's this god mm-hmm. that cares about these fragile humans, and he loves mm-hmm. like every single human. He wants to make villains good guys again. He mm-hmm. wants to like help out every single person. Yeah, the way they wrote him in like this universe, this mess of a universe in the cinematic universe that yeah. we're in with DC. Yeah. He kind of just really just cares about getting in with Lois Lane and uh super simp making some uh <laughs> super babies. Yeah. That's really all he cares about. He doesn't seem like a you superman. Know. Yeah. He just kind of seems like Superman just to Lois Lane. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds for Superman or any of those heroes. Yeah. Like, it's, it's kind of it's everywhere. It's all clouded right now, yeah. but I'm holding on to hope because that's what Superman's all about, man. He's a, he's a beacon of hope, and that's what I'm hoping for. Is <laughs> give me something, man. Help me, help me, <laughs> help me, help me. <laughs> yeah, but I just because I just keep up, like keep thinking of things like things they could have done. Right. But here's the thing: is that I don't want to focus too much on the past, and I'm sure them as a studio don't want us to like focus on the past, and so. I I'm I'm hopeful for the future. And that's all I have to say. Hope. 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 Stands for hope. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Jeez, the S. Alright. Uh we have done a lot of uh dogging and critiquing. Yeah. Well let's let's move on into some more happier stuff for stuff we uh that's not out yet. Hmm. Stuff that we can speculate on and hmm. what have you. Uh February second. February second. Uh okay. the Super Bowl. And Groundhog Day. Uh, oh. We had three... I guess they were all in one trailer. Yeah, that's an all-in-one trailer. I'd say each of them got about a decent, what, 10 seconds? Kind of jambled in there. Yeah, I think they had to pay like some million dollars just to get those seconds right, in. Right, so. exactly. Um, kept... No, whoops. Uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh-huh. WandaVision. WandaVision. And Loki. And Loki. Yeah. So we can talk about those for a little bit. Obviously, what all we know is what those 10 seconds gave us and mm-hmm. then all the speculations from fans and other mm-hmm. comic book pages yeah. and stuff like that on the internet. I think out of the three of those, the most that we got, like the most thing that we got out of um, those three, I think mm-hmm. the most that we got was from WandaVision. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure when these are re- releasing. I don't think... I, I'm sure there's the the giant like super long calendar timeline yeah. thing that they have. But I don't know how accurate that usually is. Mm-hmm. Um, let's just say they're coming out within the next. But do three we years. do we know which one's coming out first? Because that's I what think I think it was supposed to be. Cap- or, I keep Falcon, saying it. Falcon, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I first? think it was supposed to be that one. I think. Oh, okay. Hmm. That's... And I'd say we got more out of that. Really? Um, yeah, we can debate this a little. Uh, just because we actually got to see plot, and oh. we know that they're going to be fighting uh, Zemo, Zemo mm-hmm. and that he's back and stuff, and they're going to mm-hmm. have to unite. Well, they're already kind of united, but they're yeah. going to have to take Cap's place essentially, mm-hmm. and go up against Zemo, Zemo. this villain that kind of tore apart, yeah. you know, the yeah. Avengers. Yeah. Which I really liked Zemo. I think that he was mm-hmm. number one. He wasn't killed. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to every other villain, right? He was. He's still around. Yep. And he tried to kill himself. He, yeah, he tried to, but he failed. Mm-hmm. But I think that he was different in the way that he didn't, he wasn't in like the crosshairs, you know, like, mm-hmm. like he wasn't up on the, in the battlefield. You know? Right. He wasn't that type of villain, but he was the manipulator. He was behind the scenes. And I feel like that is so what they did in that movie. It's not my favorite Marvel movie. Right. But it was it's still good. It's and, good. But I what I feel like they did well in that movie was Zemo mm-hmm. and how they handled his character. I mean, he's not cam- comic book accurate, but I mean, still he was still right. really good. Like him just manipulating. Mm-hmm. Like he they were going after him in that, you know, weird fortress type area. Yeah, and, they they tricked the audience with that. Yeah. Like everyone's I, thinking they're going to go fight like five or six or whatever it was yeah. super soldiers. Yeah. And so you're like, oh, this is going to be one hell of a battle and yeah. stuff. And nope, they're all dead. Yeah, they're all dead. And he just like flips the switch almost. Yeah. He's just like, no, you guys are going to fight each other now. Yeah, he just he tricked the audience. Yeah. It was just like, you had no idea. I had no idea that was coming. Yeah, me neither. I was no. expecting the three of them to fight these gigantic super soldiers mm. and stuff. And then they'd beat them in the end and stuff. And, yeah. But nope, 
So that, I think that was really good. And so to see him to come back, mm -hmm. I am very excited to see what he does and what they use him for. Now, this gets a little bit into the uh, speculation and theories mm. and putting on our little tinfoil hats or whatever. Uh, he was being watched by the American government, right? Or I guess just the UN, maybe? Whatever. Like, everyone had him Shield? on watch. I don't think it was S.H.I.E.L.D. Because mm. it was the... Um, it it's was been a while since I've seen it. Dude that plays uh, the Hobbit, who was British but was doing an American accent. Yes. Same one from uh, uh, Black Panther. There we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. He wasn't the Black. Panther. Yeah. He he's essentially the one that's like at the end of the movie. He's like got him like in the sh strapped in like the prison chair. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, you're gonna be here for a very long time. Blah, blah, blah. He leaves like ten seconds later. Well, that's the, yeah, and then he walks away. <laughs> yeah. If he's being watched so closely by the government, do you think that the reason he's out and about now is because, uh, spoilers, I guess, uh, he was snapped away? Wow, that's actually, I've Do never you think heard that, that it's like, I just thought of this the mm -hmm. other day, because it's like, well, if he's being watched so, like, Closely. everyone's just, like, staring at him yeah. and stuff like that, do you think he got snapped away, so they're like, well, I mean, there's no point in holding this facility anymore. Yeah. They take all this stuff down, and then, you know, snap back, and he just kind of pops there, like, whoop, I was sitting in a chair, what the hell's going on? And then he's like, oh, time to resume my evil plan. <laughs> I Whatever that may be. That's a good idea. Yeah. I've never even heard of that. But I yeah. think that's that's generally really good. And it makes like the most sense. Because, yeah. you know, if someone's sitting in that chair. And he's not a very athletic person. No. Or he's clever. But I don't mm -hmm. think he's going to be like dismantling the chair and yeah. stuff. And pulling a... I don't Houdini. Know. Yeah. Pulling a Houdini. I don't think he's going to be doing anything like that. I think it has to do with the snap. And yeah. I think that, yeah, oh, I think that really ties it to the rest of the universe. Where right. You can still see the ramifications of Infinity War and Endgame. So, and plus he doesn't look any older. Yeah, like exactly. In, in he, the, in the scenes. he looks like maybe like a few wrinkles or something like mm -hmm. that, but he does not look like he's aged. Yeah, the, that much. Yeah. Gosh, what was it? So, so it has five, to be. Five years. I it's think. the five years plus the, uh, the years to get to yeah. Infinity War yeah. and stuff like that. Um, so I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I think I, he got snapped. That's my theory. I could totally I think that's be wrong. A good theory. I'll agree yeah. on that. Agree I think he that. got snapped. He's back now. The government needs help. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they can't call on Cap anymore. And the Avengers are kind of, yeah, as we really saw nice. in like Spider Man, it was just up to Spider Man yeah. to save the day from Mysterio. Yeah. So I think it's kind of them two are kind of uniting together. They're gonna try and take Cap's place. Yeah. They're gonna you know help out the government and stuff like that and take down. Zemo. Yeah, and honestly, I'm kind of excited for it because honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss seeing Chris Evans as yeah. Captain America, but yeah. it's gonna be really cool to see how they. I don't think they're gonna fight over the the mantle of Captain America, no. but it's gonna it's gonna be really cool to see how they handle their uh, relationship with one another, mm -hmm. uh, the Winter Soldier and um, and Falcon, like how they. You know, they just lost somebody that they dearly like or right. dearly love, you know, and it's going to be interesting to see how, because at the beginning of their relationship, they were kind of like frenemies. Like, yeah. they're just kind of bickering it's, back They're and both forth. like yeah. the best friend of yeah. this one person. Like, he's like, no, he's my best friend. No, yeah. he's my best friend. <laughs> kind of a deal. And so it's going to be really cool to see how they, you know, react with one another and how they have to kind of get along now to kind yeah. of fight this common enemy. So I'm excited. Yeah, I like you said. I don't think they'll be fighting for it, especially because at the end of uh, Endgame, Endgame, he was just kind of like, "Nope, that's for you. Yeah, you you no, go talk no, to him." Kind of deal. Yeah. Um. One thing I want to talk about was just so it's these are all Disney Plus shows. Mm -hmm. These are shows, not, not movies. movies. These are not. It's still within the cinematic universe, yeah. obviously, mm -hmm. but they're shows. Yes. I think they're going to do really well based on. Uh, uh, watching the Mandalorian, the yeah. Mandalorian. We're not going to talk too much about this because this is old news at this point. Mm -hmm. But the Mandalorian, when you watch the Mandalorian, it's a Disney Plus show. Mm -hmm. It's a show, not a movie. Yeah, it feels like a movie. It does. It's got. It feels like it has the same budget as a Star Wars movie. Yeah. You know, all the blasters, the ships, everything. Yeah, it feels like it's straight out of a Star Wars movie. Like they had the same budget, and I think yeah. it's because it's Disney. So mm -hmm. they, <laughs> they most likely did have the exact same yeah. budget. Um, so I think when it comes to these movies uh -huh. or these shows, mm -hmm. I think they're going to kind of reflect what we saw in the Mandalorian where it's like, it feels like it's just, just like right out yeah. of the movies mm -hmm. because of the same, like perfect budget, same actors, same mm -hmm. 
Same uh, writing teams yeah. and stuff like that because they can afford to do that, yeah. but in like an actual lengthy show now. Because mm-hmm. I it might no, I guess it doesn't cost. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I... Shows generally are cheaper than movies because movies mm-hmm. have like enormous budgets, but mm-hmm. this is this is a show using very important people, yeah. very yep established universe and what have yeah. you. Yeah, I think that might have to do with the also the runtime of each episode. Because mm-hmm. each episode of The Mandalorian was only like a half an hour. Yeah. And so, honestly, do you do you think that they're going to also go that route of, you know, these shows? Like, Loki and, you know, WandaVision. Do you think they're going to be half an hour long? Or do you think they're going to go the full hour? I don't know. Episode? See, I don't know what to expect from them. Because that was, that was like a Star Wars. So maybe that yeah. was like on, you know, that team's mm-hmm. choice was to make it a 30-minute mm-hmm. kind of ordeal. Usually when we receive Marvel shows before... Like Daredevil and stuff like Daredevil, that. Daredevil, that was like... Each episode is like an hour. But with the budget, they weren't as... Right. Expensive. Right. And so, so. with these, I don't know. I think... I don't think they're going to do like 20-minute episodes. No, of course not. Because I think that's too small. Yeah. I think like a solid 30 minutes. I don't think it'll be an hour mm-hmm. unless they're like, you know, five episodes or something. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't really... I don't have too much information about this. No one really does. Everyone's just speculating yeah. right now. And so it's hard to gauge. Like I, sometimes I, I hear like, oh, it's going to be four episodes long, mm-hmm. and they're, each episode is going to be like two hours long, and it's just like, what the heck? Like, yeah, that's a full movie. Like exactly. And so we don't really know what to expect. And so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they do, and you know, I, I can't wait to see Zemo, and I can't wait to see because it's, it's weird. Because these are movie actors. Yeah. And now they're going to be essentially TV shows. Mm-hmm. And that's that's really, really it's strange. weird. It's a weird feeling. Yeah. It shouldn't be a weird feeling, but it's a weird feeling. Yeah. Like, even with uh, Pedro Pascal with The Mandalorian, mm-hmm. like, he was he was in Game of Thrones, and he was in Narcos. Yes. Um, and so, it's like, he's a TV actor. You know, yeah. essentially, these are bigger budgeted TV shows, but, like, he's, you know, he's a TV actor. TV, yeah. And I th- he's been Just in the movies. actual, like, shows and stuff yeah. like that. But... I don't think it like Sebastian Stan, I think his last name is. And uh, I don't even remember Falcon actor's name, but these guys are movie actors. Yeah. Like, and not just movie actors. They've been in several of yeah. the same universe's movies. Yeah. They've been in multiple movies. They've been in the highest yeah. grossing, whatever yep. of all time. Now mm-hmm. they've been in that movie and now yep. they're going to be in a show playing the exact same characters. Mm-hmm. All these people actually, yep. uh, it's just weird. It is weird. And Let's so, we can move into Wandavision now. We've talked a lot about Falcon and what's his face. Enough. Uh we'll move into Wandavision. Mm-hmm. I'm at a complete loss. So uh <laughs> I think that everyone is. Okay. And honestly, at first glance, what it reminds me of just to you know, for the sake of a theory mm-hmm. and what it reminds me of in general. It reminds me of Two comic book storylines. It reminds me of number one, The Visions, which is written by Tom King. And that's kind of just like essentially like if Vision had a normal life. Okay. I, I've never read I've never read it, so I don't know how good it is or what. But I just I know the general idea is that like he's living a life. You know, like with a, a picket a white picket fence outside, and he has a wife and kids, and but they're all visions. Okay. And it's just like it's it looked like that. But the other thing that it reminded me of, it also reminded me of the House of M storyline where Wanda um I I think I again I haven't read this storyline, but I know the general specifics of it. Right. That I think that uh Vision dies or her yeah, somebody dies. Okay. And so Wanda uses her powers to kind of manipulate you know the universe and she like gets rid of mutants and she brings back vision back to life Mm -hmm. and she has two children with vision and if you look into the the trailer and i could totally be wrong correct me if i'm wrong but in the trailer you see what like because in that trailer that part of the trailer like each portion of the wandavision part was like only a second long right and so there was like a, a portion where it's like Wanda and Vision are in the room and like off screen below the screen, like you, you see two uh, baby pacifiers oh, okay. like fly up and it's like, 
okay is that like them hinting it at like to the maybe house of m storyline ish like not exactly the house of m but it's like are they going that route right where it's like she's manipulating re- reality to have this perfect life like this sitcom life where yeah. it's like life is portrayed as being perfect and that's and why it's it's going it's yeah going off of all those sitcoms you know because yeah. people like brought up the list of like oh in this scene it's comparing it to like uh, i love lucy or something yeah, like that. yeah and it was going on like that and what you were saying in uh one of them i think she is pregnant yeah she's definitely pregnant in uh-huh. one of the scenes yes yeah, that's right yeah so i'd say so but like where where would it go then is it just sitting in a house the entire time is it like I, yeah i read somewhere that half of the show is going to be like the sitcom ish esque thing okay. but like it's gonna be like something's off like you're gonna see something where it's like i don't know like the walls are bleeding or something like that okay, not exactly yeah, yeah. i'm just saying like right, right. something's something gonna shows feel wrong. you that it's fake yeah something's wrong and then the other half is gonna be action i which i don't know what she's fighting means. her own mind or yeah something. maybe yeah you know and here's the thing is that the mcu wanda is so much different Mm -hmm. from the the you know the comics wanda because comics wanda is pretty much like the super overpowered you know daughter of magneto mutant yeah and she's still strong in the mcu she's Mm -hmm. she took on uh um thanos and everything but she doesn't to my knowledge doesn't have like this reality warping you know power at least we haven't seen well we kind of see it because she's able to in uh, Age of Ultron, she does the kind of thing where the she... dreams. Right. And then mm-hmm. it kind of puts him in that trance where it's just kind of like this peaceful mm. world where they're seeing like all this stuff. Yeah. And then it kind of gets dark and stuff like yeah. that. Like all of a sudden. Okay. So it might It could not be, be like she's doing it to herself. Yeah. It maybe. Could be. It could be like not necessarily reality warping where she's just... Yeah. She's putting herself in a dream. I can see that. Yeah. But yeah, then it's that. it's got to go somewhere. She's got to... Yeah. Every, every story, especially when it comes to comic books and... You need a hero yeah, and a yeah, villain. Yeah. You need a protagonist and an antagonist. Mm, yeah. And so, like, that's what I was saying with Falcon and Winter Soldier. Like, we know who the enemy is. Yeah. We know it's Zemo. Mm-hmm. With this, it's kind of, it's still out there and out in the open. So, everyone's just speculating now yeah. on where it would go. Yeah. Um, and I think she's actually supposed to be in a movie, isn't she? With she's Doctor supposed Strange. to be, yeah, the Doctor Strange movie and the movie. Which is going to be like a Netflix. horror movie. Um, uh, maybe. Maybe. Question okay. mark. Because the, the director, the original director was a horror director. Okay. But since then, he left because of creativity, you know. Creative difference. differences? Yeah, creative differences. And so, I don't know. Okay. Question mark. So, it might be. It might not be. But I'm either way. But I'm the movie excited. is still going to happen. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, like, you have to wonder if this is going to tie into that, if that movie is going to come out first before the mm-hmm. show does, and if Doctor Strange is somehow going to get involved in the show, if it's going to lead up to the actual movie yeah. and the team up with them, too. Hmm. But, yeah, that's pretty much all we have to go off so far with that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last one being Loki. Loki. And I feel like Loki is the one that we got the least. Absolutely. We only got, like, two We seconds. literally just got him sitting in a chair. Uh-huh. Uh, it kind of looks... Okay. Again, tin mm-hmm. foil hat time. Yeah, it kind of looks like he's like a prisoner. Yeah, a prisoner yeah. He's got this kind of like weird alien barcode. Uh-huh. I'm thinking again. Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, there's speculation. I've read somewhere where it's I forget the name. I'm not too literate on Marvel stuff, but I think that there's a specific prison. Um. Where people are sent when they mess with space time. Okay, in the that's Marvel. exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Was like these essentially these time cops. Yes. Or this yeah. time baby. Yeah. Did you get that reference? <laughs> yes. Uh, they're seeing the, this guy mess with time because he's got the. But does the tesseract let you travel between time? I thought it just opened. No, it's portals. just it's it's between space. You know, you okay. can manipulate. Yeah, where you go and. It's just uh, it's weird. Um, yeah. Who knows? Uh, yeah. But essentially, yeah, I think it's that's kind of kind of be a plot mm-hmm. point, maybe. But I don't think that's gonna be the whole show. No, um, definitely not. Everyone was complained about the logo. Even I was. I because people were uh, posting like you know like a cool thing where like the the horns make out the O or whatever. No, yeah, so, yeah. 
that stuff is cool, but when you when you actually see like the trailer or when the the moving animation for this mm-hmm. logo, yeah, and all the things are changing, mm-hmm. it kind of makes me think it's going to be kind of like going into different dimensions, kind of different time, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so he's he's going back into this time, messing with this. He's mm-hmm. just trying to sense. mess up everything. Because again, this is also if it's the same Loki that disappeared with the Tesseract, yeah. it's he's not he's, good. Yeah, he's evil. Loki eventually became kind of good, but yeah. this is kind of the like, uh, just after the Avenger, <laughs> yeah. the first Avengers movie yeah. kind of Loki. So he's uh, he's not a great guy. No, which sucks because I really like good Loki. Yeah, he was pretty. Yeah, but he was good through this show. Who knows? You might end up good again. Yeah, maybe. you might find a love interest or something along the way. Maybe you know that's something they like to throw around. Yeah. We'll see. I, for one, from a graphic design standpoint, still hate. You know, like it, yeah. I still hate it. Like I get what they're trying to do. I get it now. When you yeah, first see it, it, you're like, "This is garbage." I still get it. They could have just did it better. Yeah, I hate it. I'm a hater, but whatever. <laughs> you know, that's just but you me. you work in graphic design. Yeah, you you I, design. <laughs> T-shirts, tattoos, everything, yeah, and apparently. stuff like that. Yeah. So you, yeah, you're seeing it from a different. I'm just a hater, and I'll just take that. <laughs> I'll take it. And you're but... attacking everyone today. You're yeah, attacking the people I'm... that designed that logo. You're attacking the <laughs> creepy Sonic people from 2010 and all that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful, man. You're making I'm enemies. Making enemies, and I'm making them quick. Oh no. Maybe I'm the villain overall. It at could the end be. Of, at the end of WandaVision, it's yeah, me. <laughs> it's you. At the end of this podcast, you know, way down the line, yeah. it's going to be like me versus you. You're going to be the evil villain. I'm going to have to stop you. Yeah, good. good terrible, good terrible luck. man. I could be like Zemo and I manipulate you. Yeah, how dare you? <laughs> All right, hang on. i got to see where we're at. Okay. We're done with those. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we've talked enough about them. Excited about them. So we're going to get into, we've talked about some DC stuff and mm-hmm. some Marvel stuff. Yeah, some Sonic stuff. And I guess some Archie stuff. Some Sonic, if you're going with Sonic, Sonic cuz that's uh that's who made his comics. Archie. Uh so we're gonna, we're going to kind of divulge and go to uh Valiant. All oh, right, yeah. yeah. Valiant comics. That's right. Um I completely forgot about that. What about them or the topic? The topic. Okay. <laughs> oh no, I love Valiant. I I love their comics and what they're doing what are just because again the valiant's kind of again it's off the path it's it is. something that they don't have something to hook people on no like dc and marvel do mm-hmm. what are some things other than what we're about to talk about what are some things that anyone could link to valiant at all it's hard huh nothing nothing i feel like you'd say nothing nothing um there might no no unless you're like a hardcore comic reader mm-hmm. and like you you read things that are not dc or marvel mm-hmm. i feel like you don't really i feel like people who some people who even read marvel and dc don't even know who valiant are right which is fine yeah it's fine but that's just how kind of i don't want to say underground because they're still relatively well known yeah but they're that's how much of an underdog they i'd are. say they're on like the same level of dark horse as dark horse yeah, but or, at least Dark Horse has Hellboy. Right. But that's it. Yeah. You can't name anything else. Mm-hmm. Other, like, the common man can't name anything else other than Hellboy. Yeah. Who who gives a crap about, what is it, Lobster Johnson? Oh, I like Lobster Johnson. Right, but nobody knows about Lobster Johnson. <laughs> yeah, they know about Hellboy, and yeah. that's it. Yeah. And even when they're watching Hellboy, they're like, who the hell is Dark Horse Comics? <laughs> what the hell is this? Anyway. It's true. Um, so, I think this is going to be Valiant's opportunity yeah. mm-hmm. to kind of hook people in and be like, this is who we are. Yeah. This is what we make. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the we haven't actually mentioned the name of it. The name of it is Bloodshot. Bloodshot. Yep. Bloodshot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm yep. going to kind of give you a little story of where I've been with this. All right. Okay. Go for it. So, I, I learned about Bloodshot a few months back. Before, I hadn't actually known about him. Yeah, okay. before they before the even mentioned a movie. I'll okay. get to that part. Before they had mentioned a movie or anything like that, I knew about Bloodshot because I'm a huge, 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 huge Lobo fan. Okay. I love Lobo. Yeah. On Instagram, I'll be scrolling through art and stuff. I'm like, boom, there's Lobo, there's Lobo, there's Lobo. And I was looking at this guy and I'm like, who the hell is this? This is that that an artist look or... like... Oh, you saw 
a picture of of Bloodshot. I saw a picture okay. of Bloodshot, okay. and I was like, "Who who is this? He's got red eyes and black and hair and stuff and like skin. that, and white skin. So he kind of looks like Lobo. And he kinda. looked like Lobo while I was scrolling past, and I was like, "Who is this?" And I looked at it, and I'm like, "Oh, it's Bloodshot." And yeah. I'm like, "I've heard of this before. Uh-huh. This is by Valiant." Uh-huh. And so I started looking into it a little bit more. I haven't read Bloodshot. Mm. As much, I'm hoping before the movie comes out, read, read I'll up. be able to read at least a volume. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I have read, it's really good. Uh, what I yeah. just read recently, so mm-hmm. I kind of learned about Bloodshot, looked up Bloodshot a little bit back then. Yeah, I think he has a new title out right now. Yeah, he does. Okay. And I, I moved on. I kind of just lost, went out of my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, just at the somewhat beginning of this month, uh-huh. uh, someone had posted one of the comics and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, and it was a really good read. It was, he's fighting, he essentially goes into this kind of spoof of, okay. um, uh, Friday the 13th. Okay. So he's, he's, the government sent him after, cause if you don't know who Bloodshot is, uh, he's this person that's been injected with, uh, nanobots. Nan- yeah, nanobots. Um, that make him super strong yeah. and able to like regenerate limbs mm. and stuff like yeah. that and heal super fast and he can't really die. No. Uh, unless they destroy his body completely. Yeah. Something, something specific. Uh, and so the government, what they do is they like they wipe his brain. They send him out. It's kind of like Memento. If any of you seen that movie, mm-hmm. where the cop yeah. in Memento, yeah. uh, Teddy, he uses yeah. the main character as to just to kill, kill anyone people. he wants. Yeah. He's just like, oh, there's a drug lord. Uh, all right, I'm gonna convince this guy that this that guy... He, this guy is the actual murderer. Mm-hmm. When he already killed the action murder, this is kind of how it is for Bloodshot, where mm-hmm. they're just convincing him, like, all right, this is the person that messed up your life. Go kill them. Yeah. When it's really just a runaway government yeah. experiment that they need killed, and so they have him go kill it. Then when he kills it, they just shut him down again, yeah. reboot him, and they're just like, all right, this is the guy that messed with your life. Go kill him. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's terrible, but I think at this point, he kind of knows. Mm-hmm. Cause I'll get into it a little bit. Spoilers for the comic. Uh you can read it. It's Bloodshot Annual. It's the new Bloodshot line. It's Bloodshot Annuals 1. Okay. I think it's the first annual. Okay. Uh, he goes into this spoof where he's In... hunting down this uh, this monster man. Okay. Uh, that's essentially Jason. Okay. But they call okay. him Jacob. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. And it's just this funny thing where he shows up and they think he's Jacob. And so they try like beating him up. And then like. You know, they smash him over the head with this thing. He's like, "Why? Why'd you do that? That hurt." You know, he's like, "It kind of got me into him a lot." Yeah. It's, it's it's just funny. He's yeah. kind of like this funny character who's like really strong and stuff. Mm. And uh, he ends up fighting this Jason like character. And in the end, like the government people are telling him, "Like, all right, listen, you got to destroy the entire body. Then he won't come back again." And he's like, "Well, how'd you figure that out?" And he's like, "It doesn't matter. Just destroy his whole body." And then he like blows him up. He's able to blow up his mask, and he sees that he's got, like, nanobots and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And so he's able to be, like... So then once he sees that he's got nanobots, he's like, nope, I'm out of this. This is your mess. You clean it up. Yeah. So I think at that point, he must Have an know, idea. Right, because yeah. he, he's able to just walk away. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. he's He knows, like, this is your technology. This is your mess. You clean up after it. So yeah. he must have some understanding at that point. Yeah. Anyway, that's kind of when I got into. I started. I read that. Mm-hmm. Real good read. Yeah. Um, and then that that was this month. Mm-hmm. I read that, and then someone in the comments was talking about like, "Oh man, I hope this movie's good." And I'm like, "They're making a movie on this." <laughs> so I think the advertisement for it's really bad because they yeah. made a trailer back like three months ago. Yeah, and I'd never heard of this. Really? No. It, it made some noise um, when it first came out. I saw it um and for the most part actually it's been in theaters every time you you know watch a movie i I, at least i've seen like the trailer a couple uh few times in the movie theater outside of you know the computer or whatever Mm. i've seen it a couple times but i'm actually really excited for it um for the simple fact that it is something new yeah you know and it's something refreshing it's It's something new mm-hmm. that nobody knows yep. entirely all that well, so mm-hmm. they can kind of explore with it a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a little worried, a little worried because it isn't Marvel or DC. I'm worried that people might just judge it at face value and just right. like, this is just, you know, them trying this to be. Stoop, yeah. yeah. This you just know. seems like a comic book or something yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. It is. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how people are, and it's just like, it's it's... People are afraid of new things. Yeah. 
you know, Absolutely. and I feel like that's why we haven't really received any new content in movies and stuff like that. There's never really any really new ideas. And so with this new quote unquote idea in this movie, I'm worried that people are just going to judge it before they see it. Yeah. But I'm still stoked for it. You Which know, is kind of what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. I, well, it's true. But I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm excited for Vin Diesel. Um, he's not my favorite actor. I mean, other than Fast and Furious, Groot, and the Iron Giant, I don't Iron really, Giant. I don't really know him from anything else. I think Fast and the Furious is pretty much what everyone knows yeah. him for. And so, and those aren't really the best movies, but they still have fans. They do. They, they keep making movies, so I'm they thinking do. people that like those, <laughs> yeah, are gonna go after this new movie because they're gonna be like Vin Diesel. I know yeah. that guy. He's in the last 18 movies I just saw. <laughs> I'm going to go watch this movie, and they're going to like it. Yeah. Maybe they're going to like it. Yeah. But I'm worried that they're kind of gearing it towards those kind of people. It's true. Yeah. Where they're just kind of just nonstop action, no actually good plot. It's just like... Yeah. My so, not, yeah. Uh, like from uh, the trailer. Yeah. The trailer looks really that. good. Yeah, it does. The trailer looks really good. The thing is, I'm kind of worried About that... the plot? <laughs> all the best parts are in the trailer. Because, like, when you watch that trailer, go watch the trailer right now. Uh-huh. Like, half of it is him in what I assume to be the final fight. Yeah. Where he's fighting the dude with the, the little, long like, arm thingies. piston yeah. arm things. Yeah. He's fighting that guy. I think, like, those were the best parts of the movie, so they're putting that in the trailer. That's, like, half the trailer is him fighting that dude. That's true. Oh, man. Oh, now that you say it. Right, and it's see, true. that's what I'm worried about is, like, the trailer looks good, mm-hmm. but the trailer might look good just because it's using the best parts. But we don't know yet. Yeah. We don't know yet. We do know for a fact he isn't white yet. You see it, like, barely, barely. in the trailer, yeah. yeah. He's, because he is white. He's all, like, he's not. He's pale. Say, yeah, like, he's pale. pale. He's not Caucasian. He's right. literally white. White. Like, Lobo skin white. Like, like this wall. Like this wall white. right here. His skin like is an literally egg. white. But in the trailers, he's Vin Diesel. Right. You know, and so I'm still, I'm holding on for that. Because we've seen it a little bit, you know, him in the split, like, first split second, we see him, like, he's not necessarily all white, though. I feel like it's going to be at the end. And you know They're what? They're going to pull that. Yeah, if they do do that, that means we might get a sequel if they if it does well. Yeah. You know, and here's the thing is that if they, if they make a sequel, then they might make more movies about their other properties. Yeah. You know, and so I'm super excited. I'm hopeful. Again, right. I'm hopeful. Yeah, I think they're gonna do it like a like a daredevil thing where they're like, yeah. they show the costume at the very end. <laughs> kind of. Well, yeah, that's true. I can see that because again, they're taking a risk here, yeah, and so they don't okay. really know. <laughs> but here's the thing: is that that's that's the risk I was talking about earlier with DC is yeah. that they're taking a risk, and at least it's something, and so that's what I'm I'm happy and I'm hopeful for. Yeah. All right. They're getting far and out there. Yeah. I also found out that Vin Diesel himself uh, is a nerd. Is he? Like a huge nerd, which made me kind of happy because you're looking mm. at this guy like, what does he know about comics? He's a nerd. <laughs> he uh, He's apparently super into D&D. Is he? Like I super into D&D. Would have never guessed. He got like, everyone brings up this uh, the birthday cake he got. Um, that he wanted made for him at like his party. It was like a bunch of like books and stuff like that. And uh-huh. They have like fifth edition written on them, but it's like a cake. Huh. He really is a nerd, wow. which is awesome. When you look at yeah. it, you're like, this guy's not a nerd. <laughs> this is just some like big beefy. Yeah. I drive cars real fast kind of dude. It's about family. Yeah, it's about family. <laughs> I would have never pegged him for a nerd or a geek. Yeah, he's well, he's a shredded geek, but he's yeah. like he's a geek, that's, which is awesome. That's cool. That's you awesome. want someone relatable? Yeah, playing this comic role. Do you know that? Do you know if he knows or is a fan of like Valiant comics? I'm not sure. When I tried researching some of that, mm-hmm. I think it said somewhere that either does he have kids? Uh, maybe because it was either his kids, which he might not have kids. Uh, or what? like the director's kid mm-hmm. really loved uh, Bloodshot, okay, and wanted Vin Diesel to play Bloodshot or something like that. Uh-huh. I don't know. I'd have to research it again. Um, I think obviously by now he's read it. Yeah, like something. he knows the character. Yeah. I'm sure he's read over it a bunch. You know, mm-hmm. he's not shy to reading because he loves D and D. So I'm sure he's read over it. Kind of like it was kind of cool when you see like, uh, oh gosh, Jake Gyllenhaal, right? 
Yes. Uh, when he was like reading Magneto Maybe. comics. Uh, Mysterio. Or yeah, sorry. Uh, Mysterio comics. That yeah. stuff's really cool. Yeah. I'm sure he did something like yeah. that where he researched his role. Uh-huh. And, you know, Bloodshot's not a hard character to follow. No. It's it's a real basic plot, but it's a really good plot. It is. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I have high hopes for this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it comes out soon. It comes out next month. Next month. Uh, March something. Uh-huh. 15th. I don't remember. And we're in the last days of February, so that's yeah. like a couple weeks from now. So, hopefully by the next podcast, because we do one of these a month. Yeah. Hopefully by the next podcast, we've seen it. Mm-hmm. Uh, together we have more stuff to talk about you know right now we're giving our expectations and stuff like uh-huh. that so that's gonna be so we're gonna get, be able to compare it yeah against what we said here today <laughs> i have high hopes i have high hopes as well i think vin diesel will do a good job mm-hmm. it all just kind of depends on the writing what studio is it i have let me look is at it that not lion's gate let me see hold on because we were sitting in uh while he's looking this up we were sitting watching trailers while we were waiting for sonic and the lion's gate movie came up and we're like oh it's bloodshot and nope it wasn't bloodshot it is hold on take your time why don't you sony it's really? sony yeah sony that's i gotta sneeze hold on <coughs> there it is wow yep. bless that you that was really loud that really was I but mean, anyways that was a really oh, yep look at that spike in the audio yeah that's you i tried to do your way from the mic but it was right in the mic too damn bad all right warning so we are high hopes Mm -hmm. we think it'll do okay but like i said i think some of the best parts were in the trailer and that might be bad when it's a two-hour movie now that i know it's sony i'm gonna lower my expectations you're gonna lower your expectations just a bit just because i yeah they're they're kind of responsible for spider-man yeah, better. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Even though it's the MCU, but you know, that Venom movie was it was watchable. It was okay. It was it was fun. It was enjoyable. Yeah, it was fun. But I I will say that Mar- uh not Marvel uh Sony is really good with their visual effects. Yeah, they're very good at it. High so. budgets. High budgets. So I'm excited to see. How it looks. I mean, from what we've seen in like the trailer, like the cool like nanobot kind of stuff yeah, rising up in blood. the blood and yeah. what have you, that looked really awesome. Yeah. Anyway, before we dog on that some more, because we've been doing a lot of hating in this podcast. It's what I do Mainly best. You, because you're the best. villain. I'm the hater. Uh, we're going to talk about let's let's real quick talk about transition. Your, yeah, this is transition time. We're going to slide right into an actual comic book thing now. Mm-hmm. We've been talking a lot about comic books, but we've been talking about movies. cinematic movies, yeah. shows. shows. Let's talk about real quick. Let's talk about uh, Death Metal. Death Metal. Batman Death Or is it nope. just called Death Metal? It's, not, it's just Death Metal. Was the Metal series called Metal or was it, it Batman was Metal? Dark Knight's Metal. Dark Knight's Metal. That was the official title. But this one's so just Death Metal. This is just... I, I I don't know what the whole title is, but it's oh, okay. called Death Metal. Death and metal. so that's kind of like the, the confusion that people have had because it's between Scott Snyder and mm-hmm. Greg Capullo. And if you know anything about them, they're, they said that their last Batman title was Last Night on Earth. And so everyone was like, oh, I thought that was your last Batman comic mm-hmm. and this and that. And they're like, ah, oh, you're just lying to us and this and that. And then they're like, yeah, you're right. It was our last Batman title. This is not just a Batman title. Right. This, this is... is a DC Universe title. And so, honestly, I have no idea what this title is going to be about really? uh, other than the fact that it's just a, it's a metal sequel okay and what's up give like i want to i'll give you like a minute okay summarize metal metal oh yeah, my yeah good luck all over the place <laughs> just summarize <laughs> what we're going to be seeing in death metal essentially like mm. so it's it's going to be the uh, the batman who laughs right yeah so that's kind of this is something actually that DC has been kind of preparing for, right? For the last uh, year? Mm-hmm. Question mark. So, uh, at in metal, it was the introduction of their dark multiverse, which yeah. is like if you know uh, DC, they have the multiverse, which has like fifty-two uh, different uh, universes. Yes. You know that have you know their their characters, but they're different, right? Mm-hmm. And then the dark multiverse is you know, to put it simply, is other uh, universes that are 
basically nightmares. They're like the okay. nightmare versions of our heroes that we know and love. Okay. So there's like a version of, you know, a Batman who, you know, does something horrible. Like, for example, in the um, the Batman Who Laughs title, there is an introduction of, you know, uh, I forget his name, but he was like a Batman who uses guns. And okay. so in his universe, uh, he picks up Joe Chill's gun and he shoots Joe Chill and he kills him. As a kid? Yeah, as a kid. Okay. And so he grows up to be Batman, but he grows up to be Batman who kills people with guns, which is okay. the total opposite of right. Batman. And so he comes from that uh, dark universe. And so in Metal, that was the introduction of those universes and those universes. Um, basically, what happens to those universes because they're nightmares is that they fall apart. They get destroyed. Okay. Right? And so what Metal was about was these universes um, being led by the Batman who laughs, um, being you know, are coming together united to kind of attack the, the, uh, prime universe, which yeah. uh, is, you know, the ones that the comics are written about. Right. They attack that universe because they want to be stable. They, they don't want, want have... a universe that's falling yeah. apart. Gotcha. And so that's the, their whole plot. And that was basically the plot of DC metal. Okay. Uh, you know, spoiler, the dark multiverse, they lose. And, but there were ramifications. And so, with that comes, you know, these new characters like the Batman who laughs, who is still in the Prime Universe, and he's like, he's, you know... So he didn't get, like, killed or no, anything like that? No, he's still around. He's just around, or did they put him in prison? They put him in a prison, Okay, <laughs> but he's Bruce Wayne mixed with the Joker, and okay. so he is not a good guy, and he's very brilliant, and so he finds a way out. Um, and so that's basically what the Batman who laughs title was about. And it's, it's been a roller coaster. I've loved every second of that title. I love what they're doing, um, with, you know, even the justice league title, uh, he's been showing up there slightly. And then the year of the villain mixed with, you know, the hell arisen title that they're doing. Basically DC has been doing a fantastic job with right. this new villain and what they're leading up to with uh death metal okay. again i don't know because i'm kind of behind on comics right okay, now I'm, that's I'm, fair. I'm a good like two or three months on each title i'm like behind on those titles mm -hmm. so i don't know what's happening right now gotcha but like what i've read before it's it's really really good and i can't wait i think that comes out this summer Okay. And so Dark Knight's Metal was 2017 or 18 that came out. And so it's DC is putting out a lot right now and it's good. Yeah, right. when it comes to comics, they're doing fantastic. They're doing right amazing. Now. When it comes guys. to movies, uh... don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't talk about it at all. We've uh, we've already actually talked about it. Yeah, you're right. Um, I just don't like to think about it. So as someone who barely followed metal, I followed the stuff that came out after with uh, mm -hmm. sideways and oh, yeah. damage and stuff like mm -hmm. that were kind of built on that universe, I mm -hmm. guess. At least sideways. Sideways, yeah. So sideways, his whole thing, his whole origin was that he like fell into the uh, the dark multiverse or right. something like that, and that's how he got his powers mm -hmm. and everything. And so. Honestly, it's really interesting to look back and see how everything is so connected. Um, and so there's a character in the Sideways uh, titles. I forget what his name is. It's like Frugnot or something like that. Fudgenot. The dude that's telling him not to yeah. like travel between uh -huh. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's been like showing up in, in titles lately too. And he's like... Like not just Sideways? Yeah, not just Sideways. Gotcha. And so it's super cool that they're like connecting everything so, stuff that they should be doing with their uh, cinematic universe yep they're not they're, they're doing it a bang up job yes. in the comics and so if you aren't reading comics not even just dc comics if you aren't reading comics here's the thing is that they are on fire right now like read comics <laughs> read indie comics but also normal comics because yeah. that's dc marvel that's a Wars, industry Valley. that has been around since you know the late 
I don't even know, a long time ago. All right. And so support your local comic book shops. Yeah. You can read digital. That's fine. But support your local comic book shops. Okay. And one last thing to ask for that is, um, did any of the other, cause I, again, haven't read metal mm-hmm. as much. Yeah. Uh, do any of the other, like, so we know it's going to be about the Batman who laughs somewhat. Mm-hmm. Do any of the other uh, Dark Multiverse versions, were they killed off? Were they also in prison? Did they get out? Uh, Are they coming back, do you think? It has been a while. I believe, oh, actually, I do remember. Yeah, they were, most of them were killed. Okay. Were killed off. Gotcha. Besides the, so it's not going to be like a reoccurring no. like giant battle. It's no. just kind of focused. Yeah, I think it's the, on... the only thing that is reoccurring is the Batman who laughs. Gotcha. Okay. And so I'm actually really excited because even in DC or in Dark Knight's Metal, we saw like nightmare versions of Batman or obviously Batman, but also of Wonder Woman and mm-hmm. Superman. And so I'm so excited to see more nightmare versions of other characters. Gotcha. I'm so excited. So yes. Okay. Um, we're staying on the topic of Batman now. Yeah, now we're coming, up, we're coming back to the cinematic universe and whatever the hell they're doing with it. Uh, but this month, you I have just no yesterday. idea. Well, I have no idea when they first did it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, but they, we were able to see Robert Pat Pattinson. Mm-hmm. Pat- yep. Pattinson. Okay. Mm-hmm. Robert Pattinson's, uh, Batman suit the batman where he's he's walking up in that weird red filter room uh-huh. and he's kind of walking up and kind of like does like the turn or whatever yeah. uh we weren't really able to see his ears and stuff so mm-hmm. people were still skeptical about that mm-hmm. uh just on that just on that not what was revealed yesterday not what was revealed just Elite. yesterday uh Elite. just on the red room we'll call it the red uh room. what were your thoughts Without I, seeing the ears and stuff like that. I like the suit itself. I'm yeah. very excited. I, I I think that you you've seen it too. Yeah, the yeah. the theory that, you know, the symbol on his chest is, is the gun. Is the gun. Yeah. And, and that's not confirmed. It's just the theory. Uh I think that's clever. I think I like mm-hmm. that. Um but what I when I first saw it at first glance, I thought it was just a batarang. Right. I thought it, I thought it like, would like kinda of like the Spider Man thing where yeah. it comes off his back or yeah. whatever. I thought he'd be able to just kinda of take it yeah. out and yeah, I, I when I first saw it, I, that's what I thought. Yeah, but I mean that's really clever. If it's the the gun, I think that's really clever. I mean the that's gun that killed his parents, mind you. That's yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah, I thought that was really clever, and that's kind of what they did in the comics too. Yeah, uh, in Detective Comics one thousand, it was like a small little because it was like basically an anthology about Batman, mm-hmm. and so in one of the the stories, it was written by Kevin Smith um really? it was yeah it's actually really cool That's um awesome. he smelts the gun joe chill's gun and makes it into it's not a bat symbol but it's like a plate. plating yeah, yeah it's, it's like plating. armor yeah an armor it goes behind, under the symbol yeah behind the symbol and he i like what he said it was like a good uh quote he says um so the metal that um broke my heart as a child will be the same metal that protects my my heart as a man and then he says now that's justice. Oh damn! And so I, that I is really good. I like that a lot. And so, a boy, Kevin Smith. <laughs> yeah. And so I like that. I like the whole idea of him cha- taking something that you know traumatized him as a child yeah. and turning it into something that's good. You know. Yeah. And so again, that's not ne- necessarily confirmed whether or not he's using the gun as you know his symbol or not. It could just be a bad ring. Yeah. But I think it's cool. I think it's a good idea. Either way. Yeah. Either if way. If he is just a bettering, awesome. If yeah. it is the gun, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Either way, it's good. It's either cool. way, like it, it looks good. The I bat like... symbol looks good. The bat's nice and kind of spread out. Yeah. I didn't like Affleck as much. Just kind of like it's that. It's a giant. Yeah. yeah. And... It, it was cool because it reminded me of, uh, was it Dark Knight Returns, right? Yeah. It kind of reminded me of that. And mm-hmm. even that movie itself is kind of, kind of dances around that with the whole fighting superman yeah. and stuff like mm-hmm. that so that kind of fit this is kind of i'm not really sure where they're pulling it from mm-hmm. uh so it could just be its kind of own thing mm-hmm. it's kind of own unique kind of symbol and whatnot yeah they're not basing it too much off a of comic yeah i think the suit itself besides the symbol i really liked mm-hmm. like it, it reminded me of the arkham games yeah like how it was yep. like me- not mechanical but it was uh tactical and it was you know very yeah you could see kind of like the 
not like strength. It was weird, like kind of like stuff that helps him like grip yeah. up better and stuff uh-huh. like that. Yeah, that was cool about like that bat suit. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like wasn't super high tech. It mm-hmm. was just like a lot of creative engineering. Yeah, like within like tailor made suit and mm-hmm. what have you. Yeah, and so that's what I thought about the the suit, but the cowl. I'm a little bit disappointed. Really? About the cowl. Yeah, and I'm I've on seen, the opposite end. I yeah I I because. I've seen people say that it reminds them of the Daredevil co- uh, costume from the show, and I, I guess like I don't necessarily see that. I think it's just the red mixed with you know the lack of seeing the ears and whatever. Yeah, I think that's what people it why it reminds people of Daredevil. To me, it it just I don't know. It just doesn't flow really all that which, well. Which which part of the cowl? Uh, um, like specifically the nose area. Okay. It kind of just looks like it's just been stitched together and i i'm i don't know maybe i just didn't really get a good a good look at it too much but i i'm not too keen on the cowl itself and again i have to see the um the rest of the ear which we kind of saw but kind of not but we'll like get i'm into that in yeah. just a second i think i just need to see it better see i'm on the opposite end i um I don't like the eyes too much when it no, comes yeah, to the I don't cowl. Like the eyes either. Um, I think it was just kind of the lighting though. They could look really cool. Mm-hmm. I love the mouth. The I love because uh-huh. the past two Batman, two, past two cinematic Batmans we've seen uh-huh. with uh, Affleck and uh, Bale, Bale mm-hmm. they kind of have like the closed kind of mouth up mm-hmm. to here. They yeah. kind of. I love that it's just like the full chin now. It's yeah. it again. It kind of reminds me of kind of like the Arkham games and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And people were showing. It kind of looks like uh, White Knight, White Knight's Batman mm, in a yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I really like that it's showing the entire like chin to chin or ear to ear, or whatever. Yeah. You're, I like it. I like that it's showing all that. I I really yeah. don't like when it kind of cuts off with the chin right like here. It's like just a circle instead of like a right. A well, it just seems kind of like I don't know. It's yeah. I do say that Robert's got a very good jawline oh yeah he's got the perfect batman bruce wayne jawline he's definitely gonna it. be an amazing yeah, bruce wayne he is i'm excited i'm very hopeful for his batman mm-hmm. a lot of people are getting angry and stuff like that i, I think he's a mind. great actor honestly yeah. the last movie i saw from him which was the weird one it was good i'm not hating <laughs> it was good it was just a little weird uh the lighthouse it oh was... with um was it Defoe? No, yeah, William Defoe. Right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It was a fantastic movie. Really great acting from both of them, especially William Defoe. Which it's I'm, always good acting. From I'm William hoping Defoe. that they cast him as Joker. Quite no, but that's, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Anyways, but that movie was so great because of their both acting, and I think that just just because he was Twilight, you know, I don't it even know how many a stain years stain on his yeah. reputation. Yeah. But he is a genuinely good actor. Mm-hmm. And there's this movie on Netflix called Good Time. And that I, I heard that was the, the movie that got him the part as Batman. Okay. I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to go home and watch it. We'll definitely have but to see that, yeah. I I heard good things about that movie. Okay. So I'm excited for him as Batman. I okay. have been kind of a supporter of him since I heard that he was becoming Batman. Fair enough. Yeah, me yeah. as well. Um, so just yesterday, right? It was yesterday. yesterday it was two just days yesterday. ago. No, it was it was just yesterday. yesterday. Yep. Just yesterday. We got a look at the stunt doubles, yeah, stunt double. uh, costume mm-hmm. editor. You can put that up right now. Uh, we got to look at the stunt doubles costume, mm-hmm. which means it's not exactly his costume. Nope. Cause this is just something that like be when he's zooming like, yeah. by or something like Split that. Second. Right. Um, based on that, mm-hmm. I think it looks really good. I think it looks fantastic. I think the ears yeah. look nice. Yep. Everyone was worried about the ears. I think the ears are a perfect length. Yep. Me too. Um, the shoulder pads, to me, and it, again, it could just be on the uh, stunt double. The stunt double, but they they that kind of like gives like a, a shogun look, mm. like a like a samurai yeah. kind of shogun where it's kind of like plated individually mm-hmm. kind of yeah. deal. It looks really cool. It looks uh-huh. kind of like this. This nice blend kind of that he's getting from uh, mm. the League of Assassins uh-huh. and stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, I doubt they would go too much into that because mm, I think we're... That. Yeah. But, yeah, I I really like... And that's what excites me because this is just the stunt double suit. 
like you said, we're only going to see it for like maybe a right. split second. You know, it's not it's not meant to be seen mm-hmm. by like in the in the movie wise. But one thing that I did notice was those things over his eyes. Yeah. And I'm not sure what those are. And I've seen people say that like they might go with the white eyes look, which is something that people have been looking forward to. But I'm not I don't know what those are. I don't really want the white eyes. No, look. you don't think so? I, I like the white eyes look. Don't get me wrong. Uh-huh. They're kinda you're talking like L E D kind of thing where he's No or Are you talking like animated where it's the Batman animated series? kind of white that's eyes. what people will want and i, I that would be nice i, I think it would be like... different because every iteration of batman mm-hmm. every single one of them has been eyes yeah like you're playing eyes and every batman in the comics even in animated and you know you know cartoons he has the white eyes yeah and so i think that it would be something different and i i want to see how they do it that's fair yeah when i was looking at it it kind of seemed like uh the Batman Telltale series. Mm, In the yeah. Telltale series, he has light up eyes, mm-hmm. which are essentially like these LED screens kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And you, based on what color you choose at the beginning of the game, those are the eyes, so the color that light up. Mm. Um, I thought it was kind of something like that, where it's he's seeing through these, seeing like all sorts of, kind uh, of like an Iron Man yeah, HUD kind of got thing. Got you, got you. Um, I guess it would be okay. Yeah. I wouldn't hate it as much. I don't, have we seen a cape? The stunt double was not wearing a cape. He wasn't? No. I promise oh, okay. you he was not. I looked over those so many times. I'm like, where's his cape? Where's his cape? Was he wearing a cape in the red room? I think he was. And that's something that I also really liked too. Not necessarily the cape, but he had like this neck guard thing. Yeah. yeah he had like a neck guard on behind like his cow, obviously. Okay. And I think that's what's connecting his cape to his suit. Because it's not like the, the cape is like is part of the suit i think Mm -hmm. that it's like you know like attached on to you know through this whatever neck guard thing was i think that's what they're going for and i thought that looked pretty cool it kind of reminded me of like like some tactical suits have like this thing to protect the back of their like soldiers necks and i think that's the idea behind it okay so i'm i'm excited for it i can't want to see the whole thing but real quick just because we are currently, wow, we've been going for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about the bike real quick. Mm. Again, this we have no idea if this is like the movie bike mm-hmm. and what have you. Uh, personally, this is just me. I don't like it as much. Uh-huh. Now, I'm not expecting like a, like, uh, excuse me, Dark Knight's Batman mm-hmm. kind of thing with the, you know, the, gigantic the, yeah, the wheel yeah. kind of tumbler and what have you. When he does that part of like the bat bike, bat cycle. Mm -hmm. I'm not hoping for something like that. But the bat cycle in this, it honestly just looked like a normal like motorcycle (laughs) that they just slap bat ears on. Yeah. Which, you know, in some cases that is how Batman does it. But like it didn't seem like high tech or anything like Mm -hmm. that. It literally just seemed like this kind of weird like 90s motorcycle that Mm -hmm. he just slapped bat ears on. It looks like any other motorcycle. Yeah, I mean that could possibly be what they're doing. It could, it could. And I, to me, it looks. It reminds me of um, the Zero Year um, motorcycle that, which that wasn't necessarily a motorcycle. It was more like a dirt bike, mm-hmm. and it had like the the bat symbol thing, like it does in the movie or in the image that we've seen of the yes. stunt double. It has it basically like that, and so I think. I mean, people have seen has said the same thing, and so I think that's kind of what they're going for like it's more of a simplistic thing um but yeah i i'm i'm hopeful i i think that this is again just the early years of batman he like robert it's pretty young Mm -hmm. and so i think these this is like the early years of batman where he's not really as seasoned as he is like in you know whatever com like continuity or whatever like he's just like i don't I hope they're not doing another origin story. Gosh, no. I hope not. Like, I hope, like, he's... If I see those damn pearls again, break <laughs> off that damn neck while We're some Joe Chill shoots him down. We've seen it a thousand times. We don't need to see it again. We'll Everybody it again. knows Batman, parents die. Batman, parents die. We don't need to see it again. Probably see it again. We're going to see it again. I know we're going to see it again. We don't need to see it again. 
But Nobody what I'm this. hoping is that this is like his second year or something like that. He's still new to the crusade yeah. of being Batman. That's what I'm hoping for. Somewhat uh, like, uh, was it just year one, right? Uh, year one, uh, yeah. That's where he's kind of coming back. We could, honestly, now that I think about that, they could be the direction that they they go for because yeah. in the year one he meets selena kyle who exactly. is catwoman and so i mean we all know like uh i forget her name zoe miss zoe actress lady that is playing, uh the is, current one is playing catwoman yeah you know and so maybe that's what they're going for is like a year one type of deal but i think it could work it could work i mean that's a good that's like a he's good just story. coming back gordon is just starting now mm-hmm. uh Gordon, we keep. It's amazing how much we've come back to Westworld. Uh, Gordon is also being played by. He was Bernard slash. Uh, Bernard slash. Just say Bernard. I can't remember which one was which. Yeah. It was Bernard the actual one, or was it the spoilers robot one? It was both. Bernard, Bernard no, was the robot one. Was the robot one yeah. okay? And then the real one was called something else. Yeah. I don't remember. Either way, he's being played by that actor. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, I think he's going to do yeah. such a good job. I'm so excited. Um, I think they wasted their opportunity with Andy Serkis. True. I definitely think that Andy Serkis should have been somebody else. Cobble Alfred? Pie? Alfred? Yeah. I, either way, You're I You're throwing Penguin... Okay, it's it's just an insult. You're throwing Penguin in the movie. Yeah. You're throwing Andy Serkis in the movie. And you're not having Andy Serkis play the Penguin? Yeah. That's a sin. It is a sin. Bad DC. Bad. You spray it with the bottle, you go bad. Anyway, sorry. I it's think a either way. I think either way, Andy Circus is gonna knock knock it out of the park. Oh, absolutely. Like he always does. It doesn't matter what he's playing. Yeah. I think he might steal you know the the limelight. He could have played anyone. Yeah. He could have played Catwoman. <laughs> you know, he could have been every single he person. Been the sexiest Catwoman. He would have been. Yeah. He would have convinced you. Yeah. Because he's just that good. He's great. I love Eddie Serkis. He made me feel emotions for a talking monkey. All right? Was Caesar? From... Yeah, Caesar. <laughs> That's right. No! Just the one line that he had. That was like the first movie. But yeah, then he ended up getting more lines. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's a fantastic actor. Anyway, yes. I think everyone that they've involved in that movie is, is amazing yeah. actors. Yeah, they are. And it's weird because it's... I wonder where, where they're getting the budget for this. Because they're using like... Everybody in there is an actual big actor yep. who's been in a lot of other stuff and yep. have a lot of experience under their belts mm-hmm. but anyway we've talked enough about that um you had something to talk right about okay that so i have no idea i wanted to keep this <laughs> i'm taking a break go on i wanted to talk about this because this is something that happened to me this wednesday okay comic book day comic book day which that day was February 19th. Okay. So to put like a timestamp on uh, the timeline here. And so a little bit of backstory. Every Tuesday afternoon at four o'clock, I have an alarm on my phone that okay. alerts me to email my local comic book shop, which comic book titles I want for that Wednesday. All right. And so Do you I have the had... name of this app that you can shout out or... or no, you said it was an alarm. It was just an alarm. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Yeah. And so I email them every, every Tuesday and so this Wednesday, I'm walking into my local comic book shop, okay. comics and stuff. I'm Chula Vista. And these guys are the coolest guys on the planet. All right. And so I just, you know, I go and I walk up to the counter and, you know, they hand me my titles, you know, that I have. And so this week of February 19th came out Batman number right here, uh, 89. Right there, if you could see it. They absolutely can't, especially with the glare. There okay, you tell go. Me, yeah, it's a little better. Can they see it? Probably not. You, you'd you want to walk it closer. It's not the glare that's a problem. It's the... Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, fantastic. Whatever. We'll have, a, we'll have the editor put a picture. <sighs> so, this comic came out this week. All right? And so, there's a little bit of like drama that came around this comic especially with my comic book shop or might even be with other comic book shops too but with this title again i'm behind on this title i'm like um i haven't even read uh 85 so i'm pretty behind and so i don't really know what's going on in the in that title but in this issue 
Spoilers. Okay. Spoilers. Something kind of big happens. All right? There's a new character. And okay. it's Joker's new girlfriend. Ooh. She has, at the very end of the issue, like, you don't even see her. You see her lips. You see her lips. Okay. All right? And so, what was such a big deal was that because of this big thing, there were these comic book, not collectors, but I don't know, he, my, my friend, he gave them a specific name, but these people who essentially upsell important issues come in and they pretty much buy all these issues just to make a profit off of these comic book stores. Okay. Right? And so the issue here was that my that the store and I'm assuming other stores did not know this was going to happen. Okay. All right? And so they just bought, you know, they buy from Diamond and they buy, you know, a certain number, like a normal number of comics for a comic book shop. Yeah. And so what they didn't know was that this is going to be a big deal. Okay. And so the the problem was is that because this happened, they needed to start selling this comic book that is supposed again. to be it's supposed to be about four dollars. Okay. They started selling it for twenty five bucks a pop. Wow. Wait, comics and stuff, or are these these people coming in and buying it? No, uh, comics, the comics and stuff. Oh. They started charging this twenty five bucks a pop. Wow. Which is like. Dude, because they like, had, because they had ran out or because because it's like in order to make a profit mm -hmm. and it, to keep from having people make a profit off of them right they needed to start selling these things at a higher rate because there's such a high demand for it right now gotcha and so the issue is is that me being like a active comic book reader and actively reading this title mm -hmm. is that like I otherwise I wouldn't have gotten this title if they could, okay so I got charged this cover price okay that's good that's good for me yeah and that's because they like me they know me they know that I am you know as they put keeping their business af afloat that's not my words that's what they said okay so they know that I am you know actively giving them money uh -huh. and I'm actively doing it because I love these products not because I'm trying to make a profit off of them. And so the 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 problem here is is how do they distinguish whether or not somebody desires to actually read this comic book or they're trying to make a try, profit trying to make a profit off gotcha. of them. And so next week it's there's a title coming out called Hell Arisen number 3 and that's where she's going to make her official debut. Okay. And so it's going to be kind of like the same thing where it's like how are we going to distinguish whether or not these people are going to just try to make money off of us or they're just, you know, they're actually, you know, genuinely, you know, comic book readers. And so it's like, I get it. I understand like where people are coming from. Like they, you know, want to buy this comic book because, you know, it's going to be expensive in I don't know how many years or days or whatever. Right. So I get what the, like their mentality is, but it's like, man, at the same time, you're taking away from the actual readers. So you're mad at, or not mad, so to speak, mm -hmm. but you think that comics, comic stores are taking away from the actual readers? No. You think the, uh, so the, the profiteer so people. So the, the, the what they, the, the comic book um, store people were essentially telling me is that they had no idea that mm -hmm. this was happening. Like, and I get that, like, he, he was telling me, he, like, he understands, like, DC can't really tell them what's going on, mm -hmm. like, in the titles. But at the same time, like, it would be so much better for them, like, the comic book stores, if they had known beforehand so that they could order more issues of this issue. Gotcha. And so, the problem is, like, man, you're taking away from people who actually want to read this. Right. Like you're not you're not contributing to the actual community, you're actually taking away from the community because you're you're making money off of these stores and you're taking away this book out of the hands of the readers who are actually reading it. And so, man, that like when that I heard that, it kind of irked me because it's like, dude, like that's just these people are already struggling as it is, these comic book stores. Exactly, yeah. They're almost like 
blockbuster at this point. Like they're pretty mm-hmm. rare, you know. And so it's just it's it's frustrating. Yeah, I think to me. And in a world where like even soon our own titles are gonna be just super easy to find online. Yeah, for free. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it's gonna suck. That's what's putting them out of business is that people are yeah. getting them for free. Mm-hmm. Uh, when and it's gonna it sucks i know it's gonna happen to us eventually but they're already struggling like you said that they're already struggling and now there are these people coming in who are not uh, scamming i guess Mm. you could call it like scamming them yeah and it sucks because it's like you said how many comic book stores are there now like people it's already very few people that buy comics you know Mm -hmm. it's there are a lot of people that buy comics but when compared to like other the entire yeah like yeah. everything in america yeah it's comics or comic shops and buying comics are at like the very bottom of the list yeah when you can just get these things online for free mm-hmm. or when you just don't care about comics at all exactly yeah. and so i feel like like you said these people especially the indie community uh we're the ones that are still like clinging on to these stores mm-hmm. and it's awesome because they themselves are you know supporting us by they are yeah putting titles and stuff like that. We've had so many uh, amazing, wonderful comic book stores that are just like, oh, absolutely. We'll mm-hmm. bring in some stuff. We'll buy them from you. We'll put them on display. We'll sell them. Yeah. Uh, we'll, you know, tell us all about it. We'll read it ourselves. We'll tell other people about it if they're mm-hmm. interested. Yeah. And it's, yeah, because we talk so much about our wonderful community. Yeah. We did that so much in the last episode. Yeah. And a part of that community is the comic book stores. Mm-hmm. Now there is like the, the kind of corporate comic book stores the one that also just see us as you know but when you get down to like the store the workers in the store Mm -hmm. they're the ones that they love us just as much because they are us they are these comic book fans they are these people some of them have their own titles some of them are indie creators as well Mm -hmm. and it yeah i i get what you mean it is super frustrating because It's it's it for me personally it's frustrating because i've been reading this title since issue one yeah and as soon as a title gets outsold, it's like, it's hard. To, it's impossible to find. Yeah. You can't like, it's, it's just like, what am I going to do? Just buy it digitally? And like, that's just as a collector. When, yeah. When you're a collector, don't buy it digitally. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, I could buy it digitally, but it's just, it's something that's missing, you know? And again, it just takes away from the community, you know? Like I, I like Batman and I like, you know, the, the, what they're doing with it now. And it's just like, dude, what, what are you, what are you doing, man? Like, yeah. get out of here. <laughs> you vulture, you know, stop stealing away from me. And now and they're, they're picking on like some of the lowest, like, I guess lowest hanging fruit, I guess. Yeah. Where it's just like, they know that this is like a small majority, uh-huh. you know, and they, they've decided to attack this uh-huh. to, you know, wound collectors and stuff like that by yeah. you know upselling and what have you mm-hmm. and it's, it just sucks it's yeah. just like the only person that benefits out of that is them is that and of course person, that's yeah. always how it is but it, we're such a small like yeah i mean i got lucky because i got i got charged a uh, cover price right but some of these other guys had to pay 25 bucks some of these other collectors yeah i gotta pay 25 bucks some of these other people who they have jobs, you know, yeah. they can't make it every Wednesday and stuff. Yeah. They have to go on Thursday. And mm-hmm. then suddenly they're realizing, oh, I have to pay so much more mm-hmm. for this title mm-hmm. because some guy who probably doesn't have a job came in the day before. And got them all. Yeah. And that's just, ah, it's such a scummy thing. And then upon that is like after it's sold out, now they have to go find it online by these guys yeah that are upselling it. Now they got to go to eBay and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like, it's, it's probably going to be like a hundred bucks. Yeah. It's like, what the heck, man? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Get out of here. That's, go, that's what frustrates me the most. I was about to say go attack somebody else, but just just get a life. Get a life. Get a job. Yeah. Uh, it's just... Uh, Join the rest me. of us. Yeah. That irks me a little bit. Okay. I, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Moving on. Well, moving on. We've kind of talked about all, all we can about the pop culture and what have you that happened this month. Let's talk about us now. Yeah, now we're going to talk about us. This is usually how we're going to do it. We're going to save uh, stuff that involves us and our comics and stuff like that for the end in mm-hmm. case people don't want to hear us uh, talk about ourselves for Forever. You know, for the beginning yeah. of this entire show. We're going to save it for the end now. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, what the heck are we talking about first? Hang so on. the first thing. So next month we are oh, yeah, actually there you have go. two things coming out next month, which is like next week. So the first thing is we are going to a convention here in San Diego. Whoop, whoop. And it's a big deal because this is the same convention that we got denied to last year. Whoop, whoop. And so we're so as you can as you can tell, we are so <laughs> excited. We're super excited. This is the first actually I haven't even been to a comic convention at all in my neither life. of us have and so this is a big deal for us like i haven't even gone as an attendee to any comic convention so right and now we're going and we have our own table yeah and so it's such a big deal we're so excited we're if you are in the comic or in the san diego area um check out sd comic book fest it is the san diego comic fest yeah you're right and so uh, it is when is it it is march 6th Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, 5th, because they do it on a Thursday night yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's the Thursday night on the 5th of March, and then 6th, 7th, and 8th of March. Those are, like, the main kind of days. Yeah. It is at the Four Points Hotel. It is, what is that area? It's just past the uh, the Children's idea. Hospital. Yeah. Um, the Radies Children's Hospital, the huge one, if you know where that is. If you're in the San Diego area, uh, absolutely come. Come check us out. It's going to be awesome. It is... They sell tickets at the door. Yes, they do. Um, but you can buy some, tickets now, I think. Yeah, you can buy tickets now. You can also buy tickets at the door. Mm-hmm. The, it's definitely not going to sell out. It's it's not this enormous no, thing. No, but there will be big names there, actually. There'll yeah, be. actually, yeah. There's. You should check out... Definitely check out the guest list. Uh-huh. Uh, we, we can probably put the, uh, the link in to the, the website in the description for this episode. Yeah. You can check it out. Uh, we will be a part of the small press. Yeah. It's kind of like where the other indie creators go, as yeah. well as the Artist Alley, which is mm-hmm. other comic book artists and what have you mm-hmm. that are indie. Yeah. Um, so we'll be there, and yeah. it's going to be fun. We're and... so excited. We don't know exactly what to expect. Nope. We've never done something like We've never Not been to a all. convention, like we said, and we've never, obviously, we've never had a table at a convention. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping by next episode, mm-hmm. we can fill you all in and be like, it was, it was amazing or, or it, it was, was a disaster. terrible. <laughs> We had but no we're idea what we were year. doing. <laughs> yeah. Now that we're in, yeah. uh, the way it works is next year, we already get a pass. We are yep. already in. We're like we're the first in, people baby. contacted. We don't need to be on a waiting list or anything nope. like that. We're in. Yep. You know, if so. we tell them no, then we're off again. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, we're excited. Again, next podcast, I'm hoping that we're just like, we get to talk so much about what a wonderful experience it was. Yep. Hey, all the people we might have met, we can shout out some new people, some new friends and yeah. stuff, other local indie creators. Because we don't know too many local creators. Yeah, we know really. a lot of indie creators. Yeah, in general. But no uh, San Diego. No one that we can actually like meet up with mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Um, so we you, are super excited about that. If you are in the San Diego community, or maybe you're in the LA community and you just yeah. want to come, just... Just come. Hang yeah. out. We'll talk to you. Like, That's so great. Yeah, it'll be so fun. Just check it out. We're going to be selling comic books. Comic We're going to be selling Crossbones 1 and 2, right? 1 and 2, and uh, some other some stuff. Stickers. Some stickers. Yeah. And a lot of other stuff. Yeah. So, exciting. We're exciting, absolutely thrilled. Exciting. So, other thing on the agenda for next month is this guy. This guy right here. I don't know if you can see that. That guy right there. Hang on. There we go. It's me. I'm Burlap. I'm having a Kickstarter, March 10th. 10th. It's going to be great. Let's go into detail about that right now. Okay. That's what Burlap sounds like, by the way. Yep. And don't let Jesse Bear tell you different. So Burlap is coming to Kickstarter March 10th. And I think I butchered it last time. I think I said a wrong date last time. I think you said time. March 10th. Maybe not. Either way, it's coming to March 10th. All right. And so it's going to be such a big deal. This is the first... Um, what do you say? Other partner of ours, Jesse Bear. He this is like his first employee. Time. Not, yeah, he, he's our, our partner. A he's partner. A, he's, he's our first partner. A part of our uh, family. Yeah. A part of our family. A part of our universe. Part of our. And company. so it's such a big deal, you know, because this is going to be, you know, the first four issues of Burlap coming, and they're going to be available to you. And so it's I, again, I can't praise this title enough. Yeah. I love it. He he always updates us with new pages like every so often. And it's just like, dude, this is crazy. Zorn is such a great artist. Jesse is such a great writer. And them just coming together just to form this, this title of Burlap is just a beauty. 
And so for that to come and to kickstart for you to, you know, get and to buy and to uh, experience, that's going to be awesome. So come out and show your support for the indie community. March 10th. March 10th. Go to Kickstarter. Yes. Uh, we'll be, yeah, you'll just have to look up Burlap. I'm pretty sure we'll be the only ones yeah, when sure. you search Burlap. Yeah. Uh, we're excited for it. There's going to be some rewards that I don't think we can talk about just yet. Not yet. Um, but like, like you said, we're super excited about mm -hmm. it. Uh, we've gotten to know this guy from the past few months. He joined us back November 13th, November 13th. We have it hung up right there cause we're so happy and proud of it. Yeah. Uh, we've gotten to know him, his title, his characters, his little world, his universe, his city, everything. Mm -hmm. It is fantastic as comic book readers. We just, we love it. Mm -hmm. We, you, we guarantee you if you like any titles whatsoever, if you, uh, yeah. if you like horror. Yeah. If you like, like horror. Slasher. If you're a fan like of that. any slashers whatsoever, if you just like kind of like a dark and gritty kind of noir kind of mm -hmm. feeling, yeah. if you like that black and white feeling when you're reading like, like uh, Walking City. Dead or yeah. something like that. Walking or, Dead and Sin City. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. It's, it's really you good. will love this comic. It, anyone will love this comic. Mm -hmm. If you like some really brutal stuff, you're going to love this comic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very brutal, but it's very good. I like it. I love this title. Yeah. But yeah, March 10th. March Absolutely 10th. come out and support it. I'm gonna try to put like a spinning wheel like to hypnotize march 10th yeah. go pledge to burlap on kickstarter so yes with that being said i think that we're gonna end it here Yeah, we've been going for quite some time now honestly if you've listened to this whole entire thing like kudos to you dude. good on you oh two people gosh. that said all the way through and the editor who also had to sit all the way we through we had so much to talk about. We even had questions that we were going to ask. Oh, we, shoot. Oh, man. <laughs> we ran out of time because that is just getting too long. Yeah, we can save those questions for next time. Next time. time. But, oh, yeah. If you want to ask a question, just DM us on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Mm -hmm. Just send us a question. Send us an email. And we'll, at, yeah, email us at company at gmail.com. And we will answer that next time. All Absolutely. Right. Uh Thank you again so much for watching this. Uh, it's been a wonderful February for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we are so excited for March. Yep. Uh, thank you again. I'm Jesse Chisholm and... JD Gonzalez. And we thank you so much. Have a great day. See you next time. Woo! Woo!